Hi everyone, how's have, have you all been? It's great to see, as I say, always to see you guys chatting with each other in the chat as you're waiting for me. <sighs> Already I'm getting called Captain Eric. Hi everyone. Oh, Rohan, that's you saying Captain Eric. George Phillips, hi. Hey, George Phillips. Uh, Matthew, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Jess, great to see you here on the stream, right at the beginning this time as well. Hi, Green Dragon. Elite. Hi. Pizza Man. Dark Saber. I'm good, Jess. How about yourself? Let's see here. Oh, Big Bash is at the gym. Says He says, it's always good to see you stream while at the gym. That's good. I try to stream every Sunday, so... Yeah, Brandon Gaming, Miles Adair. Oh, it's so, so good to see all of you here. Well, almost all of you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you too, Jess. Uh, I'm good, Adam. How about yourself? Uh, Aritra, I've not seen Blue Eye Samurai yet, but it is on my list of things to see. Drake, how, I'm, I'm good. How about yourself? Hello, Eric. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Ethan's drawings. Hi to you as well. It says, hey, Eric, I'm still unsubbed to your Patreon due to some issues, but I'm going to fix it today. That Don't don't worry. I look forward to seeing you back on there. And I can't remember what uh, Patreon tier you were on. I think you were on the Let's Watch tier, weren't you? Where you get to Let's Watch movies and shows. Very soon you're going to see uh, another Grinch Let's Watch on there when I f saw the Jim Carrey Grinch for the first time in like 20 years. You actually see me react to that on my Patreon. I'm going to upload that. That I've, I've finished editing it, and it's going to be uploaded very soon. So when you rejoin Patreon, you can uh, go ahead and uh, watch that. So, yeah. Marvel Cinematic Disaster. What movie pissed you off the most? It was Cars, but that was more boring. Didn't really piss me off as much as it got me annoyed that it was such a boring movie. I felt like I dra dragged my dad to it, so that was a shame. Um, Pizza Man says you always stream when having lunch. It's not on foot. It's not deliberate. I mean, right now it's seven thirty-five p.m. here in the UK, so you could tell that's not my intent intention. Um, going back to your question, uh, the movie, one of the movies that pissed me off that I can remember most recently that pissed me off was Smile. Great movie all the way through until that ending, which I mentioned in my worst movies list. I think it was of last year. That movie pissed me off. Horror movies in general piss me off when they just pull out an ending from from the from the pull an ending out of their ass basically at the last second, which is what that movie did. Uh, Adam Ahmed says, "Is Batman your favorite superhero?" Yes, he is. Oh, for for Jess, it's two thirty six. Um, I'm assuming that's PM. Two thirty six. Wow. That's five hour time difference. Oh, and I've already got a super chat from Iron Warrior. You're, you're always doing these super chats. I really appreciate that. It says, let's get this started. What are your top five least favorite Marvel movies? Phases one to three only and excluding Captain Marvel for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons indeed. Before I answer that though, very, let me just very quickly, because I forgot to do this. Let me very quickly put in the link to, uh, stream, to Streamlabs, because I was supposed to do that before I start the stream, but I think I forgot, so let's quickly put that in and pin it in the comments section. So if anyone wants to donate to me uh, through Streamlabs, which is the preferred method, all the donation goes to me and none of it goes to YouTube. Through Super Chats, m most of it goes to me anyway, but uh, some of it goes to YouTube. So, so let me pin this message and then I'll read it. Uh, your message, your super chat, Iron Warrior. All right, let's go over that again. Let's get this started. What are your top five least favorite Marvel movies? And phases one to three only, and excluding Captain Marvel. Okay, so I'm going to have to try to do this from memory, so let me see. And this is, like, off the top of my head, so this is not me having thought this out or anything, but it is uh, off the top of my head. All right, in fifth place, let's say... Um, Avengers Age of Ultron. In fourth place, it would be Iron Man 2. In third... Oh, this is hard to do it backwards. How about I just do it from 1 to 5? I think that'll be easier. Alright, in first place, it'll be Thor The Dark World. Second place, it would be, let's say... 
I think Iron Man 2. In third place, it would be Avengers Age of Ultron. In fourth place, let's say Thor Ragnarok. And in fifth place, um... Fifth place, the Marvel movies. Let's... Um... Tricky. Uh, let's put Ant-Man the Wasp in there. In the second uh, movie. So yeah, that's... The top of my head, that's a, that's a list that comes from the top of my head that I can think of right now. <laughs> Jess has thrown a burning question in there. Do you guys, did you guys watch Eric's worst movie list? We can talk about that later if you guys want to. Yeah, Ant-Man 2. That's what I mean by Ant-Man the Wasp. Yeah, Iron Warrior. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. I'm glad you found that funny. But that was a stupid kid in that, in Extraction 2. A lot of people were saying it, not just me. It turns out everyone was getting annoyed of that dumb kid. Uh, GC... E H O A. I'm sorry, I can't spell that. It says, "Will you watch Blue Beetle?" I have seen Blue Beetle, and I wasn't really a fan of it. I thought it was too goofy. I did not like the family, which a lot of people did like, and I was looking forward to seeing that main uncle, whatever he was, that actor who was in Shark Boy and Lava Girl, whose name I can't remember. Uh, he was so annoying. He was just so loud the whole way through. I wasn't a fan of that movie. Not adult film, Nate. It's going to be uh, an adult show, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so, uh, just letting you guys know very quickly, if anyone donate, uh, becomes a patron member, their name will be placed beneath here for this live stream. So, that'll be one of the additional perks that you'll get if you join my Patreon during the live stream. And also, remember, you can donate to me via Streamlabs, and when that happens, I'll get an email, and then I will read your email, and I will... So, sorry, I'll read your super chat, and I will answer it. Um, Pizza Man says, Eric definitely subverted my expectations with his worst 2023 list. You still subvert expectations better than Ryan Johnson. No one subverts expectations better than Ryan Johnson. Than Ryan Johnson. Uh, Big Bash, did I watch Shark Boy and Lava Girl when it came out? When I was younger, I did, yeah. I thought it was dumb then when I was a kid, and that means it'll be dumber now that I'm an adult. Alright, so, I'm going to get to the stories now, but as always, remember... Alexa decided to turn itself on. <clears throat> Alright, so, as always, I'm going to be talking about the stories, and when that happens, I can glance at the ch at the chat, I can maybe mention one of you, one of the comments you're putting in there, but I am not going to be reading them out loud or answering them, because when I do that, I tend to get distracted from the story that I'm telling. The only time I will answer a question, a question is when you do a super chat via YouTube or a Streamlabs chat. Once you do that, then I will answer your question immediately, but, uh, or as soon as I can. But during these, when I'm talking about these stories, you can't interrupt, I'm, I'm not going to be able to interrupt, uh, interrupt the story by reading your message on the chat. But, ex like I said, except for super chats, for people that do super chats and do streamlab chats, those I will answer, but for the rest of this stream, I'm going to pay attention to the stories until I say to you guys, what do you think? All right, so... The first story that we're going to be talking about is Ben 10. Now, <clears throat> now, now I was obsessed with Ben 10 as a kid. Practically all the kids were. So, here. This was Ben 10. And now... Like I said, practically all the kids were. Ben 10 was such a huge show when it came out. In fact, some of my first videos on YouTube were playing the DS game, Ben 10 Protector of Earth, because loads of people were struggling to beat the boss battles in that game. And I was the first, I, I actually was one of the first YouTube channels to show everyone how to do it. And my first Ben 10 boss battle video got around 70,000 views at the time. And this is when YouTube was a lot smaller, when there wasn't as anywhere near as much people making content as there are now. So I was like one of the first people to actually sh put up guides as to how to beat the boss battles in Ben 10 Protector of Earth. And then I even recorded an entire playthrough of the game and also showed how you can unlock Upchuck and how you can play as Gwen 10, uh, which was uh, exclusive for the Nintendo DS version. Those really were the days, and it was so much fun to be a Ben 10 fan. 
And as well as me and my siblings watching the shows and playing the games, my younger brother got the Omnitrix watch, the exp you know, the expensive one, not the much cheaper one. And yeah, like I said, said those were the days. Ben 10 is actually to this day one of my top 10 shows of all time. It holds that much of a place in my heart. So you can imagine how excited I was when the showrunner here you go, I'll show you. This is Ben 10 Alien Force, which focused on Ben from when he went, was 10 years old to 15 years old, so it made him more mature. Speaking of mature, so you can tell how excited I was when the creator, Duncan Rolio, Rol I can't spell his second name, I apologize to him. But basically, he's the creator of the show. You, could, you can imagine how excited I was when I heard that he wanted to make a much more mature and adult Ben 10 show. This is actually what he said right here. He, sa he says, when the, he was asked if he would want to make a, an, an Adult Swim show, which is supposed to be the sister channel of Cartoon Network where the more adult shows go, like the last and final season of Samurai Jack, which was more graphic and violent, he goes, absolutely, it would be great to have a high-stakes show that offered more mature themes, not so interested in gore or sexual content, but dealing with emotional, social, and political elements that the MCU movies deal with would be more ex would be exciting. Now, first of all, if he's going to deal with political elements like the MCU, I am not interested. Because the political elements is something that I thought the MCU did the bare minimum with. So I think the MCU could have done far more with it, but unfortunately they didn't. So I really hope that was a spur-of-the-moment comparison that he did. That being said... I do like the idea of that, making Ben 10 more political, because Ben 10 Alien Force Seasons 1 and 2 were more mature versions of Ben 10 as a character and as a show. Um, but then we got this, Ben 10 Alien Force Season 3, and Alien Force Season 3, they made him act like an- they made Ben act like an idiot, because apparently the studio wanted Ben to act more like he did in the original show when he was 10. That was some studio notes, so... And that's why Ben acts completely out of character in Alien, in Alien Force Season 3 onwards. As well as Ultimate Alien. They even... Which was another show, which it was not very good. They even changed his future self. His, his future self, Ben 10,000. And said that he was super immature now as well. So they really just went too crazy with that. And I thought that was terrible character development. I thought that as a kid, and I still think that now as an adult. Now, one of you did, hang on, one of you did a super chat. It was, uh, Bucks, Buxka Singh. Buska Singh. Thank you very much. I don't know what that is. I think that's 100 rupees. So, let's just write that down. It says... Hi Eric, I had a request. Can you review every Marvel Fox release weekly leading to Deadpool 3? Would like to know your thoughts more on those. I could, but I don't know if it'll be every week. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Let's, <clears throat> I can't make those decisions now. i got to work on the videos I'm working on. When I get closer to it, I'll consider it and I'll think about doing that. Uh, thanks very much for the super chat. I really do appreciate that. So, going back to what I said, if they... I thought... If they could just ignore Ben 10 Alien Force Season 3 and everything that came after that and do this more mature version of the show, I would be down for that. Now, keep in mind, even though as I was excited by the idea of this show, I am also very skeptical. Because the day and age where creativity drove Hollywood is long behind us. Nowadays, it's optics that drive them, and they love to force representation at the expense of beloved characters or completely change who the male character is so they can uplift the female character uh, or the or characters. So we are slowly getting out of it, but at the same time, we're still in it. So, lo so, so, so long as the social element that the... So, so as long as the... So the, basically, the social element that the creator is talking about is... So long as it is not about gender or belittling Ben or anything activist or woke related, and it's actually about adult themes and storytelling, such as growth and responsibility, then we are in good hands. But as of right now, I am skeptical and 50-50 on the idea. But keep in mind, and this is very important, this show has not been greenlit. It's just an idea that the creator has and wants to do. 
and let's hope they allow him to do it. Now, something that I did want wanted to see him do in this more mature show is Ben 10,000, which we saw in the original Ben 10 show, not the Alien Force version. Uh, yeah, if they brought Ben 10,000 in and, like, you're know, focused on Ben as an adult, that is something that I really want to see. And I was surprised to find that that actually seems to be his idea, to focus on Ben 10,000. So, yeah, I was happy when I heard about that. Let's hope he gets to do it. And, as, and so long as it was the Ben 10,000 in the original Ben 10 show, and not the immature and stupid Ben 10,000 from Ultima Alien, then yes, this is something that I would be really interested in. So, yeah, what do you guys think of the idea of Ben 10? Oh, and by the way, these were the games I used to play of Ben 10 when I was uh, a kid. Although, I did play Ben 10 Protector of Earth for the DS, and I played Ben 10 Protector of Earth for the PSP, I did eventually get, because at the beginning I just had the DS, and then eventually I got the PSP, and I, I was like, I can't play Alien Force on the DS because I thought it was bad. My younger brother played it, but I just really couldn't get into it, to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, these are some of the Ben 10 games, and there's also... Uh, Darksaber greenlit means that it's been approved and it's been put into production. So if it's not been greenlit, it means it's not been put into production. And I still got my... PSP games of Ben 10 right here. So, <laughs> yeah. I've got Ben 10 uh, Protector of Earth right here, if the lights don't reflect on it too much. I've got uh, Alien Force here, and then I've got Alien Force Vilgax Attacks. I used to play all of these a lot, although I've, and I was recently, funnily enough, playing Ben 10 Protector of Earth on my Steam Deck OLED, the PS2 version I was emulating. So, yeah, that's uh, quite an interesting time for this story to come out when I was just playing the game. And, yeah, I really do... I really do love uh, these games. Now, after this, there was an Ultimate Alien game, and it was looked pretty crap, so I didn't bother getting it, and that's where I just kind of stopped playing the games. But, yeah, this was uh, so much fun at the time, and still is fun to this day. I will, on my Patreon, when I do my game show, I will talk about these and all my PSP games that I've got. So, uh, yeah. And Ben 10 Protector of Earth on the DS was also a great version. One that is still a lot of fun to play now, and I've got very fond memories of it. Like I said, it was one of the first things I used to do and cover on YouTube. So, yeah. Uh, Masked Hoodie has donated nine New Zealand dollars. So, thank you very, very much for that. Let me just write that down. So for nine uh, New Zealand dollars, hey Eric, I was wondering if you had to pick ten aliens as your fav your favorites. If I had to pick ten as my favorites, I mean Ben practically has ten. I think that's too much to to ask. But if you wanted me to get my top ten favorite aliens, it's all the aliens from the original Ben Ten show. The ten that he had there, those are my favorites. And by the way, these games only allowed you to play just um, uh, five aliens in them, except for Vilgax Tax, where you could play as all ten. Oh, and, uh, by the way, this is the article where it says uh, Ben 10 could easily make an adult series, says the creator. Which it very well could. So, yeah. There's articles out there that you can read where he talks about it, but I did cover pretty much what he said. So, I don't know if it's an off-the-cuff thing, but I hope he does try to, uh, promote a more mature Ben 10 Alien Force show, or Ben 10 show when he's older. I would really like to see that. Oh, and Movie Fan 2002 has done... Damn it, what's this doing? This... There we go. I can see it now. This Just couldn't see your super chat for a second there. Movie Fan 2002 has give... donated $5 super chat. Thank you very much uh, for that, buddy. Uh, your question is, will you do a Let's Binge Watch of the Bad Batch's final season like you did with the final season of The Clone Wars? Uh, no. Um, mainly because I'm already very busy and I've got to focus on other on other videos because the month The Bad Batch comes out is the month Avatar comes out on Netflix and I've got a lot of video ideas. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do all of them, but I'm going to try. Uh, a couple, two versus videos is what I want to do with that Netflix show and I think you might know what those two versus videos are. So that's what I want to work on. And Bad Batch comes out the same month. I will not have time. Because I'm still going to try to do my live streams every week on top of 
on top of uh, the videos that I'm working on. So yeah, I'm not going to be doing covering the Bad Batch. We'll see what I do. I might discuss it in a live stream at some point. But basically, I'm focusing on Avatar for in the month of February. Well, as the month of February comes to a close. So yeah. Uh, thanks for the super chat, by the way. Like I say, these super chats really do help. And any super chats that you give for today will end up going towards how much YouTube pays me the next month. So the super chats today really are do come in handy. So uh, Green Dragon says, do you watch anime? Yes, I do. Now, anyone have any questions with regards to a mature Ben 10 show? Uh, we'll do this in two parts, actually. First off, have you watched Ben 10? That's my first question. Have you wa any of you watched Ben 10 growing up? Max Ford Gaming says, Adult Swim has been killing it with their animated shows, my favorite being Primal. Yeah, I watched Primal and I stopped watching, was it after season two? I can't even remember what happened at the end of season two, but I need to see more. I think there was a woman that ca that got introduced. So I do need to see uh, more of that. I don't know if they've done more seasons. I hope if they have, I've not missed too much. They've done a very bad job at promoting that show. They they really, really have. Oh, Adam Grunther has shown up and has given a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. And Yako the Volcanic Muto has also shown up. Uh, huh. That's bizarre. Yako says, hey, our Extreme Labs isn't working for me. I don't know why. Huh. That's bizarre. It should be working. It's the same link. Let me click the link. Server error. That is interesting. Maybe it's something, that, a little problem they're going through right now. Because that is the exact link that I gave. Let me have a look at it. I think it seems to be a problem on their end, I think. Because it was working when I clicked it earlier, when I got the link prepared for this stream. So I don't know what's happened since then. Let me just quickly check in another browser, and then I'll answer your question, uh, Adam. Give me a second. Hmm. On Google Chrome, it said uh, server error. On Firefox, it's saying nothing. So yeah, it's uh, definitely bizarre. Uh, so yeah, well, you can try again uh, later. Hopefully, it'll fix it'll fix itself. If not, we'll try it again some other. I'll check the link again uh, tomorrow. If that doesn't work, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, thanks again for the super chat, though, Yako. And uh, thanks for letting me know. That's very important. Whenever stuff like that happens, I need to know. So thank you. Uh, Adam says, in honor of a joke from your favorite TMNT movie, <laughs> lol, how would you rank the actors Chris Evans, Chris Pratt, and Chris Pine? Was that a joke in the movie? I haven't seen the movie in months. So I have to watch it again to do a deep dive. But yeah, <laughs> I like how you put that in honor of a joke from your favorite TMNT movie. How would I rank the actors then? Um, I'll say Chris pa Chris Pratt. Um, Chris Pratt, and then it's a toss up between Chris Evans and Chris Pine, because I think neither of them can sell a movie unless it's got something really good going for it. Whereas Chris Pratt, he can sell a movie if it has nothing going for it. <clears throat> I'll say for now, Chris Pratt, Chris Evans, and Chris Pine. That's uh, that's how I'll put them in order. <clears throat> Apologize for that. I don't know why I've got such a sore throat today. Uh, let's see. So, have you guys watched Ben 10 when you were growing up? And did you play any of these games? D dare I say, did any of you discover me from my Ben 10 DS coverage from all those years ago? Move Fan 2002 says the two versus videos for Avatar is between book one animated and live action, and the other will between will be between the M Night Shyamalan movie. Yep, those are my intentions to do Avatar, the Netflix Avatar, versus uh, the Shyamalan movie and versus the show of book one. Those are my intentions. We'll see how it happens.
Gregory says, was kind of expecting Cocaine Bear in your worst list. Yeah, that was a pretty crappy movie as well. Um, but yeah, I think I... The ones that stood out to me was the ones that I mentioned on the list. But yeah, definitely, that could have also easily taken a place on the list as well. <coughs> <coughs> you know what? Bear with me a second. I'm going to have a, a drink of water. Elite says, sadly, no. Oh, you really missed out on something really special back in the day. Because Ben 10 was the thing back in the time. Um, Matthew says, I watch your old DS videos. That's very great to hear. They weren't very good in terms of focus and stuff because I didn't know how to work my dad's camera at the time. I didn't know what a macro focus meant. But one video ha miraculously happened to be in macro focus and I didn't even know how. Uh, and also... Um, what was the other thing? Uh, yeah, at the time, the standards for gameplay videos were a lot different to what they were now, especially when they were about portable gaming videos. So people were willing to accept it back in the day. Let's see. Um, uh, Selena says, no, I find found you on your Spider-Man No Way Home versus video. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. I never played any of the games. I've seen the three shows, says the G-Gamer. Yeah. That was almost me as well, but thankfully I got a DS by my uncle. So that, that, that did happen, and then he got me the PSP a couple years later. Uh, two years later, to be exact, I think, and that was also great, because then Ben 10 Protector of Earth for the PSP... I've actually... Ben 10 Protector of Earth for the PSP was actually my first PSP game, and to this day I still have it, and it's in excellent condition. I was going to the game shop earlier today to find some old games to add to my collection because I lost a couple of DS games as we moved house a few years ago. So I was trying to find a certain DS game and I was looking at them. I'm like, man, all of these are in bad condition or they're scuffed up a bit. It's like, none of my games are like that at all. So I'm surprised how other people, what, you know, what on earth are they doing to their games that they look like that? They look that bad. Did I watch Blood and Honey? I watched most of it, but not all of it. I need to see the beginning. I think that's the most interesting part, and I skipped it. Because I didn't think I was going to watch the whole movie. I thought, let's just watch a little bit of something else in the film without seeing that, and then I ended up screwing it up. Adam Grunther says, I liked Ben 10 up until they started bringing back Vilgax again, again, and again. The, to me, I lost interest in Vilgax when they brought him back in Alien Force. I mean, in the original Ben 10 show... He was like this big monster that was always felt like Ben was out of his league whenever he showed up. But then in Alien Force, Vilgax goes from this evil person who doesn't care about any rules and is like a murderous killer. And he starts talking about the galactic code of conduct. And do you, you know, do you agree? And, you know, do you concur? All that stuff. It was so pathetic what they did to Vilgax in Alien Force. Even his voice was just so off. Hey, uh, King K says, hey, Eric, why wasn't Aquaman 2 on your top 10 worst? It almost was, um, mainly because of the editing, and you could tell the studio got in there and took control away from James Wan, because the movie wasn't coherent, and say what you will about James Wan, but all of his movies are coherent. The fact that this one wasn't told me that it was the studio that was starting to put their hands into the project. Uh, so, yeah, I would have uh, put that on the top 10 list, but then as I was looking through the movies of the year, I found one which I thought was worse, one that annoyed me m much more. Oh, Jonah White has uh, done a $5 super chat. Thank you very, very much, uh, buddy. He goes, hey, Streamlabs seems to be down. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. We'll keep trying as we go in the stream. I'll try occasionally as well here and there. But if it doesn't work in this stream, then it doesn't work in this stream. Um, have you played the PlayStation Spider-Man games? If so, were you caught off guard with Peter's new face change? I have played the Spider-Man games. I've got the PS4 game at the back over there. That Steam Deck over there where my thumb is is covering it. But I've got Spider-Man uh, PS4. And I love the face they did. It was very Andrew Garfield-like. And he did look like an older Spider-Man, which is what they said they wanted to do. But then, uh, yeah, I don't know why they did it, but they changed the look of his face in the uh, remastered version of the game. And they stuck with that design for Spider-Man 2. So yeah, there was definitely, when I was playing Spider-Man 2, a huge disconnect. Because I was like, this looks like a recast. This looks like they've just recast the character. But we've got the voice of the previous character. So it's like recasting Andrew Garfield with Tom Holland, but putting Andrew Garfield's voice in Tom Holland. It just felt completely like Uncanny Valley... Like, just, it just disconnects you from the character. 
it was just stupid why they did that choice. They wanted it's like they wanted to make the character look more like Tom Holland, which I thought was stupid. And yeah, it it wasn't good. I did not like it at all. That face was just so stilted and so static with this emotional range compared to the more you know to the PS4 Spider-Man's face, which was just full of emotions. And yeah, it was sad that they changed the face, and uh, they even changed Mary Jane's face in uh, Spider-Man 2. So they just keep on doing these stupid changes, and I don't know why they're doing it. It's just that's the big problem with these Spider-Man games. I feel like I'm not looking at the same character. And it makes it hard for me to give a crap when bad things happen to them or emotional things happen to them. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, a lot of a lot of you are saying you don't like that new design. Adam Grunther says, What is it about Blue Beetle that you're so turned off from seeing? I don't know if you were here. Someone asked if I had seen Blue Beetle. I have seen it now. The reason I was just put off from seeing it was because... I don't know. There was just something a quality about it that I got, which almost felt like it was something that was meant for the Disney Channel, but the Warner Brothers equivalent of a Disney Channel. And it kind of just put me off of watching it. But that being said, I did watch it. I really was not a fan of it. There was some cool stuff with the action. The suit didn't bother me as much because I said that I didn't like the voice they got. I did like it better in the movie than I did going by the trailer. But still, the movie just wasn't that great to me. I thought there were some good ideas, particularly in the climax. But it did feel very basic. I felt like they should have worked harder on it, if you ask me. I was, I did really enjoy the explosions and there were a lot of good effects in there for the... HBO, for the, considering it was supposed to be a streaming movie, I thought they did a very good job with the effects. Especially when compared to, say, stuff like uh, The Marvels, which was the last Marvel movie I saw. I was, and compared to Echo as well, which I saw recently, which was also supposed to be a streaming show. Considering that Blue Beetle was meant to be straight done straight for, to streaming, they did a very good job, I thought, all things considered, uh, with the craft of the movie. It doesn't mean they couldn't have done better, but I thought they did good. Um... But yeah, I wasn't into the goofiness. Grandma fighting with a mach with a machine gun, I thought was just too silly for me. And Echo did something similar recently, and Echo is supposed to be the R-rated show. So for them to do that, I'm like, th I feel like comic book properties are just getting too silly lately. I'm just kind of tired of them getting as silly as they're getting. So yeah, Blue Beetle for me, I thought it was alright. It was like a below average movie, maybe a 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10 at best. But that's basically it. Nate says, they didn't focus on Jaime as much. If you want a good Blue Beetle, go to Young Justice. I agree. Young Justice was where I was introduced to Blue Beetle, and I thought he was great in that. Mm, ba mm, that's interesting. Batman's Gamer says, I actually prefer the face changes for Peter Parker. That's very interesting. Darksaber says, they changed it because capturing both the voice actor and the PS4 model actor for Peter Parker was very challenging. So they had to recast the face model so that it would be easier for the animators. That makes no sense to me, because the whole animated industry revolves around getting voices and animating him in the main in the, for the main characters. I don't think that's the reason. That 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 it would be a very silly reason if that is the reason they did it. Um, and I didn't even hear them say that was the reason. The reason clearly seems like they wanted the character to look like Tom Holland, so they said make the the design look like that. It seems like a corporate decision, and I don't know if it was Sony that got them to do it or if uh, they did it themselves. But it was a stupid decision, and one that I'm always going to notice, and I cannot unsee. Uh, let's see. I did like the music for Blue Beetle uh, Yako. I thought I didn't love it, but the main Blue Beetle theme, and I think the climax had a couple of decent themes. It was pretty. It was pretty okay. It was pretty uh, decent. Adam Grunther says, Blue Beetle's tough grandma was from the comics, just saying. That's fine, but I don't know. I feel like it's just the time that we're in, and just the way it was filmed. I, I feel like s superhero movies, they need more dignity restored to them. I know that uh, superheroes, there's Marvel had introduced this thing of making the silly stuff kind of endearing, because it's a superhero movie, but I feel like now we're in a place where we really need more dignity, and we really need these superhero projects to try harder. And something like that, I feel like, if it was going to be done, it shouldn't have been done as goofy as it was. And then when you look at Echo, it's like, what's Echo's excuse for the for the, for the, the same grandma trope? It's like, it's just not, 
it's just I just don't like what they did. What they did. These superhero movies are getting too silly now. They need. They need. Well, back at that place where I think they've circled around, where they said that superhero movies are too are too silly. Then they got serious, and now they're getting too silly again, and we need serious. Or at least a better balance, because I don't think Blue Beetle did as good with the balance in this as it, as it could have. Uh, let's see. So, any more stuff about Ben 10, guys, before we move on to the next story? I know you've got a lot of questions, but uh, I'll answer them later. Uh, during a Q&A, or like I said, if you do Super Chats, I can answer your questions right now, but I'm going to be moving on to the next story, so anyone else have anything to say about Ben 10, whether it's the show, whether it's Alien Force, whether it was Ultimate Alien, or that crappy new Omnitrix show they did, whatever it was called, and do you have any thoughts on the games at all? Eric, I, Jess says, Eric, I think these superhero movies are reaching out to kids nowadays. I would agree with you, but they're being rated PG-13. If they're being aimed towards kids, then honestly cut the bullshit and just give them a PG rating. Why does these movies that are so kiddy get PG-13s? I feel like that's more for marketing purposes than they actually own that rating. Like, we know which PG-13 movies really deserve the PG-13 rating, and it's not any of these superhero movies that are coming out lately, specifically from Marvel. But Blue Beetle was one of them, where I was like, yeah, it does not deserve that rating. Movie Fan 2002 says, Ben 10 is great, but I didn't grow up with it. Uh, Saeed235 says, is there a Ben 10 new series? They're thinking of making, well, the creator was talking about he would like to do a more mature Ben 10 show on Adult Swim. So it's not been greenlit or anything, but it's something they're considering. The G Gamer says, have you seen Omniverse by any chance? I've seen a little bit of it. I thought it was a bloody disgrace of a show. Like... Talk about gutter trash, going from something like Ben 10 that was so great to gutter trash like Omniverse. That was atrocious what they did. Let's see. Elite says, I was busy getting into the new Teen Titans original show, but I will find time for it. Uh, Selena says, you, you, when you see a, a, an MCU trailer, the last time I trust an MCU trailer, I lost... Oh, me when I saw an MCU trailer. The last time I trust, I trust an MCU trailer, I lost an eye. Yeah, kind of. Except it wasn't... Yeah, let's... That's a comparison. I'm not going to give any other comparisons to that comparison. Yako says, Oh, Eric, did you hear that there's a live-action Ben 10 movie coming out? I heard about that, and one of the rumours is that they want Tom Holland to be Ben. Freaking stop. You can't give Holland all of these characters. Going from... Nathan Drake, which was a character where he was completely miscast, and now trying to do Ben 10... Which will also just be the wrong casting. You need someone who's closer to that. I would say get an unknown for Ben 10. The property will drive people to it. Put Tom Holland in it, it'll just piss people off. So no, no Tom Holland. I'm sick and tired of seeing Tom Holland. It's like, do you know when they say you see an actor too much when they're overexposed? And you just kind of get uh, tired of seeing them. It's like you need a break. That's what I feel like we need with Tom Holland. And he seems to be taking a break, so I hope he keeps taking it. I hear that Selena has left a comment. W what comment has she left? This is why I say, guys, Super Chats help, because it's hard for me to filter through all of these. Not only do they help supporting the channel, but they also help me in terms of reading your questions, because I'm always... Quite a few people say, have you read, read this comment or read my comment. I, It's hard. Huh. A lot of you have said no, that you've not seen Ben 10. Oh... Uh, Adam Ahmed says, I have never seen Ben 10. Uh, Big Bash says, what Ben 10 alien did you love the most? That's a very good question. From the original show, the alien I liked the most, I think, was... It was either, I think, Forearms or Diamond Head. Or was it even Upgrade? Because Upgrade had some really cool stuff. But I think I'll say... No, my favourite was Accelerate. Accelerate was my favourite. And then you also had Heat Blast, which was also really cool. As far as the Alien Force aliens go, I thought, uh... Hmm. Let me take a look at the games, actually. Vilgax Attacks. It should show all the aliens here. It actually doesn't. I'm remembering off the top of my head, but I'm trying to remember them quicker. Um... Let me think. My favorite one, I think, was Swamp Fire. 
or Spider Monkey, one of the two. <laughs> Pizza Man says, just get to the important stuff. Give me Spider-Man. All right, we'll get to that story in a few seconds. Uh, Nate, uh, Nate says, love <clears throat> love Alien Force. Every game I played that was Ben 10 were bad. Give the news give the news show more 10,000. I don't even know what you're saying, Nate. That is like a mix of words right there. Puss in Boots and the Last Wish is more PG than any Marvel movie. Well... Yeah, they gave it PG though as well, didn't they? They didn't give that PG-13, did they? Although it was definitely, I'd say, had a darker villain than any of these MCU villains. I mean, it even made Puss in Boots bleed. Uh, Lego Boy says, have you seen the Ben 10 reboot? You mean Omniverse, was that the Ben 10 reboot? If it is, no, I didn't see it. MovieFan2002 says, who's your favorite LGBTQ plus couple in media? And thank you very much for the $5 super chat. All right, my favorite LGBTQ couple. Um, hang on, Alec Barton says I think I that they think I missed a super chat. I can't. Have, yes, I have. It was uh, Iron Warrior who was uh, here. <laughs> Sorry, Iron Warrior. I can't believe I missed that. Let's see, two dollar super chat from Iron Warrior. Thank you very much. Hate to do this. Rank the Disney live action remakes. You had to ask that question with the $2 super chat. What about the $5 you did earlier? I would have said, all right, let's... Ra <sighs> if I could give you a refund and say I, t I plead the fifth, I don't want to answer, I probably would. You know, I love you guys sometimes, but sometimes I feel like it's really hard to love you. Let me just write this down then. Let's see, The Little Mermaid... No, no, no. Disney live action remakes. Let's see. I need to see a list of them so I can. Let's see. From Beauty and the Beast onwards, let's take a look. All right. Um. Oh my God, man. This is not a good organized list for me to go through. Okay. Let's see. In terms of the worst ones, I'll go from worst to least worst because that is the easiest to do. Okay. All right, the the worst one, the Lion King, then the Little Mermaid, then Mulan, then Aladdin, then Beauty and the Beast, and then then Cruella. There you go. I think I got those all down. Am I missing any, or did I get them? Because I looked at the last few releases, and that seems to be the ones. And there's quite a few I've not seen, some of the earlier ones before, these bigger ones. So that's how I'd probably rank them. Oh, and Tom Holland, speaking of him being oversaturated, apparently the rumor is, is that Sony wants him to play Zelda in that live-action uh, Legend of Zelda movie. Like I said, they're just using him too much. So, okay, now where was the other super chat? Who's your favorite LGBTQ plus couple in media? Uh, I don't think I have one, to be honest with you. Um, because I've seen them, and when I've seen them, I never looked at them and thought, that one's won me over. Because you have to kind of... It's like you have to seek those shows out, and I've never seeked them out because they usually do tend to be very romantic types, and I am just not into these romantic movies. I'm not into chick flicks or anything i've said this to you many you guys many times before the only time i can watch a romantic movie is if it's attached to another genre like the conjuring for example it's a it's supposed to be a, a movie that's got a romance in it between the warrens but it's also about horror or it has to be an action romance or a thriller something like that you know it, it can't just be the one thing the romance i feel like i can't see those so yeah i tend to just in general stay away from a lot of romantic movies whether it's a straight couple gay couple i just I, I can't, like I said, I just can't watch it when it's just that in a movie. Uh, the best one I can probably think of, although I still, I don't, I still thought it was kind of forced, was in Arcane. They seem to be setting up a relationship between those two. I thought when they were lying down in the bed that they kind of forced that, because I was thinking that if you did a slow reveal to this, I feel like the two characters haven't gotten out of their shell enough, especially the main character. I feel like she hadn't come out of her shell enough 
to where she's you know open to be that close to someone but i felt like they did it just to kind of show look what we're doing so i, w- I, th- I wish they would have done when it got there a bit slower because it felt a bit rushed uh oh yeah jungle book 2016 is a remake yeah i missed that yeah i'll put that as number one uh, no not sorry not number one that means it's the worst no i mean that's the best one so i'll add that to the very end the jungle book is the best one Lady and the Tramp, I can't remember, though. That's the problem. I reviewed it on my Patreon as a podcast, and I did a... Did I, I think I did a mini versus video on my on, on uh, my Patreon with the uh, animated Lady and the Tramp. I do think that... Yeah, I can't remember it properly, so I, I can't really comment on that one. Uh, I did say Pinocchio, didn't I? Did I miss Pinocchio out? Okay, Pinocchio will be third on the list. Oh, I got two, uh, new, two new Super Iron Warrior. Uh, you didn't have to do that. I appreciate that you did, but you didn't have to do that. I, I like to have fun with you guys sometimes, and let's just say if I really didn't want to do it, I wouldn't have, uh, I would have answered, I wouldn't have answered it then. I would have said to you, I would have found a way to give you a refund, but no, so it's okay. We're having fun, so it's okay. I'll let you off on that one, but you did. But thank you very much. I do. I still appreciate it. Now let me just write these both down. Both your super chats. Okay, you got a two dollar super chat from Batman's Gamer and a seven dollar super chat from Iron Warrior. Okay, so Batman's Gamer says, "I think you forgot Jungle Book 2016." Your words. Yeah, like I said, Jungle Book 2016, I say, is the best of all of them. And Iron Warrior says. Does this make up? Lol. It does. Uh, it does. I assume Pinocchio is going to be low on your list. So who are a couple of your favorite characters in Stranger Things? Oh, that's two questions you're asking me. Uh, I assume Pinocchio is going to be low on your list. Yes, Pinocchio is low on my list. Um, I can't even remember the score I gave Pinocchio, which is funny. These Disney remakes are just so forgettable. They really are. But yeah, Pinocchio was... Uh, it wasn't good. But it was... Not as bad as some of the other ones out there that got me really quite kind of angry. So, yeah, I would say that uh, Pinocchio was a was a f- more fair bet. I would say where I was like, okay, not good, but it's not insultingly bad like some of the other ones. And who are my, a couple of your favorite characters in Stranger Things? Uh, what was his name? I haven't watched Stranger Things in a while now. Season four really put me off. Let me just quickly remember their names. Was Steve was one of the characters, wasn't he? Uh, let's see, was it Steve? Steve, 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 Steve. Yeah, Steve Harrington, that was it, yeah. Steve Harrington, yeah, he was one of my favorite characters. And of course, Dustin. You know, Dustin was a great character. To, you know, we all found him a great character. Really funny and hilarious. So yeah, Steve and Dustin. As, and those two as brothers, they're like, you know. It's like those two, those two were just inseparable. They were such a good, a good and unexpected duo in season two. Who would have thought those two would be a fun team? But they were. And Steve being like a mom when he go, when he puts that towel around his shoulder and says, I'm in charge of you little shits or whatever. (laughs) That was so, so funny. Uh, How about the Cinderella remake? I've not seen the Cinderella remake. Um, I've only seen bits of it. And uh, you also asked me... uh, well, Gregory, uh, I did actually like Titanic. Titanic is, like I said, I used to watch some, but not anymore. And I don't like getting into new romantic movies, quite frankly. Some of the older ones, though, especially some of the classic older ones, I've seen those. But there's a lot of older classic ones that I've not seen. And by the way, I saw Maleficent, by the way, Lego Boy, but I cannot remember it. Again, that was a long time ago. Movie Fan 2002 says, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate The Jungle Book? Well, I'd need to see it again to know for sure, but if I had to give it a rating, I'd say a 6 out of 10, but a good 6 out of 10. Yeah, Maleficent I've not uh, seen in such a long time, I can't even remember, guys. So I didn't forget about it. I saw it there, but I didn't uh, do it. Lion King, I said, was the worst one. Because why don't you put Lion King there in a question mark? 4 out of 10. Yeah, I didn't hate it. That's why. I... I like how you guys remember this stuff. Let's see. Rank Maleficent. I can't because I genuinely can't remember much of the movie. I only remember like about two or three things from it. I do remember those uh, fairies or whatever that was supposed to look after um, uh, the baby in... Um, 
uh, was Sleeping Beauty. They were supposed to look after Sleeping Beauty. I remember they were pathetic. They were so annoying. What they had, what was done to them. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. I think it's about time we get to uh, the Spider-Man story now. I think we've been on this for a long time, the Ben 10 thing. But uh, yeah, they're doing something with Ben 10. There's a potential idea there, and I hope they take advantage of it. So yeah, now it's time to move on to the Spider-Man story. And the Spider-Man story is... Marvel and Sony disagree about direction of Spider-Man 4. <sighs> Okay. Now, apparently, Kevin Feige wants Tom Holland... Now, Kevin Feige and Sony, this is. Kevin Feige and Sony are in disagreements right now about Spider-Man 4. Kevin Feige apparently wants Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4 to be more street-level and grounded, whereas Sony wants a big blockbuster. And I gotta say, I wouldn't trust Sony, but quite frankly, I wouldn't trust Kevin Feige either with his, with his recent track record. So I th honestly think that all of, that they all have their heads up their ass. Kevin Feige and Sony. Feige has completely lost the plot and has only been further pro pro and, and that has only been further proved with Echo and what he did to Kingpin. He basically turned the Kingpin into a bitch. And he wasted his character in Echo. Like seriously, Kingpin was such a wasted character in that show. And I'll give you more I'll give you now. I'll give you more of my detailed thoughts on Echo in my upcoming Let's Binge Watch video, but for now, I will just tell you that Feige has no clue what he's doing, and his wasteful use of Kingpin really proved that. Now, I've said this before, what Sony should do with these characters is so clear, they clearly have no idea what to do right now, but what I would say is that, and this is what I've said before, after No Way Home, they should have greenlit Spider-Man 4 with Sam Raimi and The Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Mark Webb and let the two directors come in with complete creative control and let them make the movies they wanted to they wanted to without Sony's influence. Because it's well known by not only the fandom but just in general by everyone that both Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man films were being controlled by Sony. So if they gave cre give creative control back to the creatives and announce that that we made a mistake with Spider-Man 3, that was on us. But we're not going to make that mistake again. We made a s mistake with Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Again, that was on us. We're not going to do that again. We're going to let the filmmakers, you know, make the movie. If they came out and did that, forget this whole side anti-villain nonsense. They would have had a Raimi Spider-Man universe, um, um, a G Andrew Garfield Spider-Man universe, and a Tom Holland Spider-Man universe. They would have had three Spider-Man universes, that if they wanted to, after giving them each an individual superhero movie, they could then decide to bring them back together or whatever. That's one of the things that they actually could have done. Um, let's see. Um, Marvel Cinematic Disaster says Mark Webb was the reason Spider-Man 3 sucked. Well, I heard a lot of other ideas that he wanted to do with, say, the first Amazing Spider-Man, but then Sony got cold feet and they just took them all out. You'll probably notice that the Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 has scenes that are just straight up taken out of the movie. The reason why is because so is because Sony put their hands into the production basically. So that's ultimately why uh, these movies have been like just such a mess. It's because of Sony, and this is there's a track record from Spider-Man Three onwards. So I'd say that pattern pretty much speaks for itself. And we've got a $1 super chat from Streamlabs. So Streamlabs is working again now, which is great. So if any of you want to do donations, you can go ahead and do them on Streamlabs again. That option is available to you again. Uh, and it's Joey Nic uh, Nicholas. Hey, Eric, it's Joey. Do you think if J.J. Abrams directed all three Disney Star Wars movies, do you think they would have been any better than what we ended up getting? That is a very good question, and I think yes. Now, would they have been a ton better? I honestly don't know. But I think they would have been more co more coherent. But at the same time, if Kathleen Kennedy is the one that's controlling J.J. Abrams, like she controlled a lot of people, I wonder if she actually would have told him to go ahead and do to Luke Skywalker what they ended up doing anyway. Is something that I wonder. So, yeah, I think it could have been better, but at the same time, it could have still had the same problems. 
All right, so going back and thanks again for the uh, Streamlabs super chat and for the super chats you are all doing in general. Seriously, thank you very, very much, guys. I really do appreciate that. Now, continuing back to what I was saying. Uh, yeah, Creative Control back to Sam Raimi and Mark Webb. So if they give Creative Control back to the creatives and announce that, then people would be more interested to see the movies and they could have two Spider-Man franchises going. But for some reason, Sony are still adamant on making their anti-hero universe movies, which they have no clue what they're doing with. Uh, so much so that... Madam Web... <laughs> I just laugh every time I look at Madam Web, seriously. But so much so that it recently came out, and I spoke about this on my last live stream. it recently came out that they removed all traces of Spider-Man references from the final cut of Madam Web because the connections didn't make any sense. So they wanted first uh, Maguire to be in there, but then that didn't happen. They wanted Garfield in there, that didn't happen. Then they wanted Holland in there, and that didn't happen. And then they found out it just didn't make any sense to put them in, so they just took out any references. So clearly it's like, why did you go ahead making that movie when after No Way Home, you had two other Spider-Mans that people clearly wanted to see? So you could have made movies about them. So clearly, I don't know what Sony are doing here. It's like they've got such obvious, easy answers and easy ways to make money, but they keep making these stupid decisions. Like, I don't know what to say. It's like stupidity like this. You cannot make it up. Seriously. So they should get it. So they should get it into their heads that what they're doing isn't working. So they should just do something. So they should do something that makes more sense. But no, that's not the Sony way. Amy Pascal and Avi Arad really are terrible producers. And they'll keep making these dumb, head de dumb bonehead decisions. Remember when Amy Pascal was going on that, yeah, the first Venom movie, that's going to be rated R. But then they clearly didn't have the guts or the balls to do it. So they made it PG-13. And then they talked about how Joker made so much money. It proves that the comic book movie is really something that people want to see. And then they said Venom 2 is going to be rated R. And then that turned out to be PG-13 as well. And that really hurt the movie because Carnage was in it. So, yeah. The, this is what they have to show for their decision making. Madam Web, which looks like a movie that they've already marked as a failure before it's even come out. I would say I feel sorry for some of the actresses involved. It's like, say, Dakota Johnson, but... I feel like at this point, if she doesn't know what she's signing on to with a Sony superhero movie, she kind of deserves to just just fail with, with the, her endeavors. I mean, come on. If you're an actor, should they at least know this by now? That the Sony movies have Venom in there and Morbius and Venom 2. And now they want to do this. And plus, she's read the script. So I'm, I'm sure she must have read the script and thought, Batman, this is bad. She should have thought this is bad. So... Either she knew it was going to suck and she wanted the money anyway, or she just didn't care and was like, yeah, I'll, it's just another acting gig. I'll get paid for it. Which, in which case, fair enough. Jess says Dakota deserves better. She needs a hut. No, she doesn't. This is all This is all on her. So I actually disagree with that. She should know better. Remember, she's got on the script of this. She should be able to speak to people, you know. As an actor, it's almost like, look, when I make a YouTube video, I put thought into should I make this verse, this versus video or this YouTube video. And I feel like, I, I feel like in the YouTube videos that I make, I put far more thought into whether or not I should make those than she put into whether or not she should be in a Sony comic book movie. It's like it comes to a, it comes to a point where it's like they really should just be able to like, like assess the situation, assess the studio, because... Actors do assess the directors, so you'd think they'd be able to assess the studio at this point, but if they're not, I, I just don't know what to say to you at that point. So, what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, Dakota Johnson does deserve better, or do you think this is all on her, which is what I think? And what do you think of this whole situation, that Kevin Feige wanted a more grounded Spider-Man 4 movie, whereas Sony wants a more, you know, another crossover with Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, because they want a big Spider-Man movie. I personally think that that, that uh, Kevin Feige is on the right track, but I don't think his previous Spider-Man movies have proved that he's on the right track, or his previous MCU movies and shows have proved that he's on the right track. Look at Echo, that was supposed to be more street level, and look what he did with that. Made a complete dog's dinner out of it. So, I feel like he would do the same thing with Spider-Man, if you ask me. 
Uh, Matthew says, I feel like a Madam Web movie should involve an alternate Spider-Man, like an actor who hasn't played Spider-Man yet. I mean, yeah, you could, but then it's like, what, we have four Spider-Mans now? I think she needs, um, sorry, Sony needs to just get their heads out of their ass and stop getting in their own way. Because look, I'm not a studio executive. Yeah, I feel like I came up with a better business decision than any of those idiots at Sony have. Big Bash says she signed up for it and I don't trust both. Yes, she did sign up for it. Again, it's all on her. Um... How about the X-Men 97 reboot? Yeah, the X-Men 97 show that the MCU are trying to do, <clears throat> still not been released. And I've heard a lot of rumors that there's a lot of trouble going on behind the scenes with that production. So that's another example of something that's going on. And apparently there are rumors now floating around, like on Instagram and things, that Anthony Mackie has got pissed off that he's coming back to reshoot the whole of uh, uh, Captain America Brave New World. And apparently he's not even been given a script. He's just been given outlines... Or notes and he's annoyed that he's not being given a script because he knows that if we shoot this we're just gonna come back in a few months a few months later and reshoot this all over again because apparently Marvel are waiting to rewrite this are trying to rewrite the script but in the meantime they still want to shoot stuff so are they really doing quality over quantity it sounds like they're still doing the exact same mistakes to me the same mistakes that they did with the Marvels and Ant-Man 3 and the other movies they're not really um, they're not really doing anything different. It feels like they're still making the same mistakes. Iron Warrior, thank you very much for the $3 super chat. Like I said, these super chats help, especially because we're coming to the end of the month. And anything I make from this last live stream will really go towards, uh, you know, me paying the bills and stuff for next month. So thank you very much for the uh, donations. Uh, you sent me a PayPal, Yako. Oh, no wonder I can't hear you. My sound is muted. I was wondering, normally I get these notifications. This time I'm not. Let me unmute that. No wonder the Streamlabs uh, chats was not notifying me with a sound. Uh, I'll check that. Give me a second. Let me answer this one from Iron Warrior. Do you prefer TM Spider-Man or CC... De oh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or Charlie Cox Daredevil? That is a very, very good question. It's almost a cruel question, that one. Let me think. That is a good question. What do you guys think? Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man or Charlie Cox's Daredevil? Oof, I love those both. Like, both is my favorite Spider-Man and my favorite Daredevil. And it's like, which one's better? Uh, I'm gonna say Tobey Maguire. I gotta go with Tobey Maguire. But it was a very hard decision, I've really gotta say. Um, so yeah, I'll say Tobey Maguire. Uh, Who we tune more? Sorry I'm late, but is if there really is gonna, going to be an adult Ben 10 series, and if it's anything like season 3 and 4 of Young Justice, count me the F out. I've not even seen Young Justice season 3 and 4, but I've heard I've not heard good things about it, which is why I didn't watch it. Even though I did love seasons 1 and 2. Yeah, that's what I said as well. I hope they don't do that. I hope they don't go the political route. You know, I really hope they don't. The activist woke route, I hope they don't do that. Anyway, let me go over to Streamlabs. And if any of you do Streamlabs now, I should be able to hear it because I've got my speakers, uh, the speaker notification on. Okay, so... Oh, Jonah White, a $15 super chat. Wow. Thank you very much for your generous donation. That really is very much appreciated. Thank you very, very much. Hey, it works. It does. It was weird that I stopped working because at the beginning of the stream when I got the link, it did work. And then you guys said it didn't and now all of a sudden it is. It's so bizarre. He goes, hey, it works. What are your expectations for Bad Batch Season 3 is the first question. I... It's the final season, and Dave Filoni, if you've looked at the history of his TV shows, whether it's uh, The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, he always gets better with each season, and season three is where he's at the top of his game, and somehow he ends up getting even better and better with the seasons after that. So, I I'm expecting great things for Bad Batch season three. I'm hoping there's the least amount of filler, because the final season... Also, what are your quick thoughts on the double Bad Batch episodes that involved the that involved the vote on the clone's future with Palpatine showing up? Are you talking about the episodes in season two? Because uh, I thought that was amazing. That they the whole time they were trying to like stop the Emperor and stop the Empire from doing something, and then they find out afterwards. Hang on, the Empire wanted us to do that, and now they can go forward with what they really wanted this whole time. 
it was it was great it showed like political maneuvering at its finest and the clone wars was fantastic when it came to political commentary and you know political chess matches and chess games and all that it was amazing so i loved it i really did um the yeah and and ian mcdermott coming back to do the voice of palpatine phenomenal it really was amazing and three what did you think of tech's death that was shocking to me and it was sad very sad the music that played there was amazing too and some people are saying oh no he's still alive i think he's dead because dave filoni he's normally killed off characters and he keeps them dead in the live action movies it's like they're trying to bring characters back and stuff in the live action shows but in the animated series the stakes in those animated shows were just so bloody high and i think that if he's killed him he actually has killed him if he comes alive again i will not be happy but i hope he stays dead because that was uh, that was that was tragic that was that was very sad but yeah i've done a trailer reaction to the bad batch season three on my patreon i don't know if you've seen it but i talk about that there and i even talk about uh crosshair how he looks defeated after his amazing arc in season two so yeah i do love i love 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 what they did in the bad batch with a lot of its storytelling when the story actually gets going because there is some filler in there still so yeah, thanks Jonah White for the $15 super chat. Any of these super chats that you do, especially in this final stream for this month, like I said, really will help towards me paying the bills for the next month because this will be what I get for our next month. So thank you very much. Very, very much. Marvel Cinematic Disaster says, I rather want a Spider-Man Noir movie. I want one too. They're going to do an Amazon Prime series of Spider-Man Noir, aren't they? I remember hearing about that. So don't worry about that. We might get some more Spider-Man Noir. Did you hear that Zoe Zeldana is interested in moving into James Gunn's DCEU? I have, and here's the thing. I don't mind them coming into the DCEU eventually, but I don't want the Guardians of the Galaxy cast to basically come into the DC, to the DCU so early. So they can come, they can slowly come in, but I don't want all of them to come in, and I don't want them to come in so soon either. Hmm. Got s about 70 of you watching right now, which is uh, great. You forgot about Ahsoka, Eric. I haven't forgotten about it. Ahsoka is a show where some characters, they, the show plays it safe in terms of bringing them back. Like when Zatine got stabbed. Was it? No, Z Sabine. Sorry, Sabine. When Sabine got stabbed. Um, honestly, she came... I just don't like the idea of these people surviving these lightsaber stabs. Seriously, it's bloody stupid. It takes the stakes out. Uh, but yeah, they kept her alive, which I did not like. So, yeah. <sighs> uh, Iron Warrior says, Have you ever seen Ben Affleck Daredevil? Yes, I have, when I was a kid. I did not like it. Oh, the views have gone down. Yeah, 65 views, says Feather Guardian. Last I saw, there was 70, or over 70, which was cool. Matthew says, what do you think about the R-rated animated Spider-Man movie being rumoured? That makes no sense to me. I heard about that. I did hear about that. And I was like, that's kind of... It's kind of stupid. I mean, it really is. It's like, unless you put Venom or Carnage in there, a villain that can really, like, you know, bring the blood and then we see Spider-Man react to that blood, then I can kind of see it. But just the idea at face value of an R-rated Spider-Man movie in general just does not interest me in the slightest. I don't like R ratings when they're thrown around for no reason. Just give me a, a hard PG-13 and I'll be happy. That's enough. You don't need to go rated R with Spider-Man. If you are, you better have a damn good idea as to why you need uh, you need it to be rated R. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, Huey Toonmore says, Polit about Ben 10, Politics aren't what worry me about the adult Ben 10 series. It's the violence and bloodshed and other uncomfortable topics. You mean sexual content. Well, let me read again the quote because you probably weren't here when I read it. The creator said this, he says, here, because I'm talking about Ben 10, let's just quickly go back to this screen. Uh, he, The creator, when he was asked about bringing Ben 10 back, he goes, absolutely. It would be great to have a high stakes show that, off that offered more mature themes. Not so interested in gore or sexual content, but dealing with emotional, social, and political elements that the MCU movies deal with would be exciting. So you don't have to worry about that. You, you, you really don't. He does seem interested in focusing on the more r-rated storytelling opportunities rather than the violence and the nudity and stuff which yeah i don't want to really see that either i don't mind a bit of violence a bit of edgy violence 
But I don't want the violence to be super gory either. I don't know if that would fit a Ben 10 thing. But if it pushed to PG-13 rating, I'd be happy with that. So, yeah. <clears throat> but like I said, um, Neoma, I agree. It was such a great show. Uh, so, I... Uh, minus the MCU part, because I think the MCU has done a very bad job with pol with politics in the MCU. I feel like they... In Civil War, they had the most interesting possibility to incorporate it. But then they just moved away from it so quickly, which I didn't like. It was about the Accords. That came and went so quickly that I did not like that. So, uh, yeah, Huey Toonmore. Yeah, no, he, Huey Toonmore says... Yeah, no, this sounds more like Steven Universe Future, and that season was garbage. Does it? To me, it sounds like it could be something like, uh, maybe Star Wars The Clone Wars, which is also has a lot of political episodes in the, in, in its, in, in its, uh, in the show. The same with The Bad Batch and Rebels. If it's on that level, I would like it. But if it's, yeah, Young Justice, I haven't seen Steven Universe, but if it's Young Justice Season 3 and 4 territory, from what I've heard, I wouldn't like that either. But yeah, like I said, I've even said this on my Ben 10 segment. I says that I'm not convinced and I'm actually a bit, a uh, bit skeptical because of that. What is the worst CW show you've ever watched? Spirit, says Spirit Hero. Um, uh, Titan season two. Hui, I know you don't want politics in your cartoons, but if you watch the Star Wars, the Clone Wars... And even Star Wars Rebels and The Bad Batch, that is the kind of politics that I love in cartoons if they can pull it off. Because it's not got anything to do with gender, it's not got anything to do with, uh, you know, the woke ideology or just activism. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It is literally just using the, wor the world building and incorporating that, which naturally has, every world building has its own rules and politics. So long as they can incorporate that very well, that would be good, like Ben 10,000's place in the world like was it did he struggle to become ben 10,000 what did that look like that's what i the kind of thing i want to see okay so yeah anyone else got any idea <laughs> got anything else to say about madam webb and sony and kevin feige's decision making here do you trust either of them or do you trust neither of them I trust neither of them. George Phillips says, Fictional politics is interesting. Yes, it is interesting. Especially if it can relate to our world in a way, like, you know, evil rulers. Like, the Clone Wars did that a lot. Uh, it's gonna suck, says George Phillips. Rohan says, I trust Marvel. You do? After the MCU? That's... I, I mean, if you've still got uh, trust in them, that's quite impressive that your sh your faith has not been shaken in them yet. But for me, it kind of ended a long, 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 long time ago. So Sony don't learn from their failures. I agree. Uh, Feather Guardian says, I only trust James Gunn. Adam says, I hope Marvel win. The G Gamer says, honestly, honestly, they should just scrap Madam Web. Yeah, they should do that tax write-off thing with Madam Web. Because I'm never going to watch this movie. I said I'm only going to watch it with my brother so we can laugh at it. That's the only reason. But if it was for myself or by myself, I would never watch it. The only reason I'd possibly watch it is to review it for you guys. But I'm busy in February, so I'm not going to waste my time on Madam Web. Marvel Cinematic Disaster says, Which motion capture animation is worse? Polar Express or Monster Hat? Polar Express. Polar Express had a lot of good motion capture animation in its own way, but the details of the facial expressions looked very Uncanny Valley. Rohan says, The only movie I thought was good was the first Venom movie, but everything else was just garbage. They wasted carnage in the PG-13 movie. I'm praying that Venom 3 is rated R. Uh, thing is, that's the thing. They made Craven rated R. Who needs to see Craven rated R? That makes no sense. George Phillips says, I agree with Kevin Feige, but how he does it worries me. Me too. I agree with him too, but his grounded Spider-Man movies that he did in uh, the MCU, Far From Home and Homecoming, I do not like them at all. So, well, Far From Home I thought was alright, but Homecoming I just did not like at all. So, it just felt too light. There need to be more stakes, and I felt like there wasn't any. So yeah, that's what I think is uh, the shame, to be honest with you. 
Feather Guardian says, CW showed me the horrors of terribly adapted comics. Well, the CW wasn't the only one showing people that the horrors of that. There were other movies that did that. Batman and Robin did that. Superman 4 did that. A lot of Marvel movies before Blade did that. A lot of Marvel movies after Blade did that as well, with movies like Elektra, Daredevil, and so on and so forth. So there were a lot of bad ones. Yeah, Big Bash grounded. By grounded, they mean more like the street-level types, where he's like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, like in Homecoming or Far From Home. And even No Way Home for a good chunk, but they didn't really do anything with it. Uh, did I see the Daredevil Born Again set photos? Yes, I did. And I saw uh, Karen and Foggy. Uh, in a scene with Matt Murdock with Charlie Cox as they were walking down the street chatting. It was great to see them again, but it also got me angry. I was like, Marvel actually killed them. Now they're bringing them back because they're scared and they know that they can't do better. But it kind of disgusts me that they were even going to get rid of them in the first place when you see them. I'm like, they just make such a great trio, they do. So yeah, I hope it stays good. I hope they make a good job of it, but I don't think they will. What do you want to bet they're going to do a bunch of reshoots on Daredevil and screw it up even more? Tom Bailey says, what other movies would you like to see Matt Reeves direct? I really like to see what he can do with the Green Hornet and Kato. Um, I would have liked to see what he could do with the Punisher. That's something I would like to see him do. Uh, see him do something with uh, Daredevil would also be kind of interesting too. Favorite Star Wars film says uh, Arturo. Um, Empire Strikes Back. Matthew says, have you seen Talk To Me? I did. It was, it was a decent movie. Karen Singh says, what puzzles me is that Godzilla Minus One had a $15 million budget, and even the Five Nights at Freddy movie had a higher budget, and looked nowhere near as good. Yeah, I know. It really it just boggled your mind. Apparently, it didn't even have a $15 million budget. It only had a $10 million budget. And I think uh, Godzilla Minus One also had... Um, what was it? It had, I think, apparently it only had like 35 VFX artists that were working on the movie and they did over 600 VFX shots. That is mighty impressive. It also sounds like abuse of the workers. Um, so yeah, there's the, probably that. Maybe they were underpaid, which is why the budget was also so low. But yeah, they did a very phenomenal job. And there was a video on Twitter that went around, or X, where they were super happy and cheering when their movie got nominated for Best Visual Effects. EJP says, do you have a Blu-ray collection, Eric? Uh, I did, but I've, uh, I've, I've, uh, loaned it off to a friend at this point, and quite frankly, I've, uh, because you can always get digital copies with your movies, I'm not really too fussed. Uh, two questions. Did you see Monarch Legacy of the Monsters and did you see the Netflix series Gamera, Gamera, Gamera Rebirth? Uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters? I want to see it, but I haven't. And did I see the Netflix series Gamera Rebirth? No, I haven't. Hey, Eric, do you have any thoughts on the God of War Amazon Prime series? I'm a little worried because they're going straight to the Norse games. You mean the new, the Norse mytho the North mythology ones? Is that what they're doing now with the PS4 and the PS5 versions of the game? Uh, we'll see how they do it. It would have been interesting to see them go to uh, uh, Greek mythology from the original God of War games before they did this, but they're trying to do this because these games are popular right now, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I, I, we'll see what they do, but they need a big budget because those God of War games are insane with their visuals. Uh, Echo Echo. Ultima Echo Echo is my favorite alien design, says Feather Guardian. Yeah, I was never really into the Ultima Alien stuff, mainly because the show itself wasn't that good. So yeah. Tom Bailey says, when do you think Hollywood will officially crumble? I don't think it will officially crumble. I think that will take a... That will be a long time if that ever happens. And I've got a $1 Streamlabs chat, which I'm going to just check on right now. I think it said Jacob, if I looked at it when I checked my email. Huh, that's interesting. I don't see it here. Unless that was an old one. Man, that's a lot of notifications on my phone. Give me a second. Let me just take a look. From Jacob Jean, one pound. It's showing up here, which is interesting. It should show up on this site, though. It did with everyone else. 
Huh. I, I got your message on my phone anyway. It reads from Jacob Jean. It says, my YouTube channel was recently by someone falsely reporting my channel. I did try to make a new channel and YouTube didn't let me verify my channel using my phone number. I'd have to wait a whole year. So frustrating. From Yako. Yako, I don't know why they did that. Uh, told you a whole year. That is insane. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly write this down. I'm very, so I'm very sorry to hear that. I know how uh, painful that can be. I remember when I was younger, my channel because I uploaded my Spider Man. I uploaded a review of Spider Man a long time ago. I think I've un, uh, I think I took it off, off the channel. It was a review of Spider Man a long time ago, and it got and it got copyright claimed. I remember, and they uh, banned me for two weeks on my channel at the time. This was back. This was back when they were doing some new stuff. When they were doing some new things where it was having an having an impact because you do you when youtube put back in the time when they were going through phases of putting in like a heavier copyright restriction and then another heavier copyright restriction where all youtube channels were getting affected mine were one of them on that video and it was like it was there was nothing to claim but it just got claimed just happened to get claimed at that point so yeah they do stuff like that is youtube is just it's like they should be able to have easily fix and rectify things for people, but they just don't care to. Uh, oh, look at that. I got a $2 super chat from MovieFan2002. What is your favorite animated movie? That is a very good question. I'd say the first Shrek movie. That's what's coming to my mind right now. But there's a lot of great animated movies. Because I've already said as well, my favourite Disney movie of all time was Beauty and the Beast. Let me just put this down here. So I got a one pound uh, super chat, and then I got a two pound super chat. Yeah, just as always, keeping notes and tabs on all this. And the time shadow. Any plans for another Stranger Things video? I beg. Um, I wanted to do a Stranger Things season four video, but covering Stranger Things with how long those episodes were, an hour and a freaking half per episode, it felt like I think it just overwhelmed me to basically go through try to find footage from each episode that I needed and to make a video on it, but I did not like season four. I hated season four. The character of Will, I was defending him in seasons one, two, and three. I was always saying, yeah, I know he's a bit weird, but you know, he's he went through a lot. I don't see why we have to... Because a lot of people, like certain people in my family did not like him. They said they can't stand him. It was better when he was trapped in season one. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that Will was like the least liked character. I was like, I don't have anything against him. He's all right. He seems fine to me, but in season four, he was just, the amount of crying he was doing, how he made uh, Eleven look bad when she was being bullied, and he makes it out to Mike that she's been lying to you, like he's, tr she, the poor girl was going through like a really horrible time, like a torturous time, and then he just made Mike turn against her by saying she's lying to you, I'm like, how about you just say nothing, because you just made things worse for that poor girl. And then throughout it, he's crying like a little bitch. Like, I was I was being sympathetic towards him at the beginning, but then he just wouldn't stop bloody crying by episode six or seven. He was still doing it. And I was like, these are hour and a half long episodes too. I was like, you know what? I've just had enough of your shit. Like, grow up and be a man. Quit complaining. And I don't normally say that, but this time I did. He got he became a real little wimp, he did. And he made the fact that he made things bad for uh, Eleven, who was being very horribly bullied, and then when she hits the bully, and Mike is like, what's wrong with you? It's like, what about when your bully was causing you problems, and what they were willing to do to you, and how she broke one of your bully's arms? You didn't say what's wrong with you then, but you're saying it now. Ugh, I just found it very... I, fa I found the writing very bad in season four, and the pacing got very bad. And apparently that actor that was acting high, that long-haired dude, was uh, supposed to be another side character. I did not find him funny. I found him, st like, just... He was put there for stupid comedy, basically. It felt like dumb comedy. None of it worked, and he's not in the next season, apparently. And I'm not surprised. I wouldn't have had him in the fourth season. But yeah, I didn't. I did not like it. 
<laughs> Feather Guardian says, the Will actor might be crying because he's forced to be in that hair he hates. That was funny. In season four, because the kids had gotten older, he looked really dumb with that haircut and with the clothes that he was wearing. They gave him little boy clothes when you can tell that he, he is so clearly a lot older than what they're trying to make him look. <laughs> that was funny. A lot of people are laughing at that. Me too. Uh, Jane says, have you ever played any of the Five Nights at Freddy's games before the movie came out? No, I haven't. I did see a bit of gameplay when I was younger, but that's basically about it. But that's not the point. The point is, is that it's a movie and they're supposed to sell people that have not played the games on it as well. That's very much the case with, with other good superhero to movie adaptations. And it should be the same with Five Nights at Freddy's as well. Although I am sure maybe if I did see the game, I'd appreciate it more. But the human characters just didn't really interest me, and I thought they could have gone scarier, to be honest. This felt more like an introduction to horror for people that have not really seen any horror movies, rather than a horror movie that is meant for, you know, adults or teenagers. Like, grown-up teenagers. Uh, Fireboy says, Oh, I haven't seen you in a while, Fireboy. Great to see you again. Thoughts on Lewis Pullman as Sentry? I haven't really seen him in anything. Or if I have, I can't remember, so I don't know, but we'll see what happens. But it really comes down to these scripts, and from what I've heard, the script for um, Thunderbolts is not in good shape. They're still trying to write it again, so... Feather Guardian says, Flash Season 9 is worse than the Ezra, mo Ezra movie. No joke. Yeah, I stopped watching Flash after Season 6, Episode 2, because I thought that it was just... It, at that point, it broke me. I was like, the show went from being so great to being so shit, so... I was done. Shark War says, I finally joined the live stream. That's great to see. Although, we're at the Q&A. We've been at the Q&A for quite a bit. Adam Ahmed says, why don't you, Eric, why don't you answer, answer my questions that much? It's because I'm getting so many questions, it's hard to see. When I say do super chats to support the channel, I also say, I've said it's not just to support the channel, it's also so I can see your questions. So if you want to uh, have your questions seen, that's what you need to do. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait and see if I, if I catch it. Because so many of you, I'm missing so many questions, not just yours. Because there's just so many. Cosmic says, hey Eric, do you have any tips on being a YouTuber? I mean, I'm planning on doing very different content from you, but you're one of my favorite YouTubers. So advice from you would be awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, the advice that I would give is that... Find what it is that you want to do a video of. Put some thought and effort into it before you decide to edit it. Like, plan what you want it to look like. You can do that in drawing. You can do that with, like, mock edits. Or you can just do it in your head if the video is short and you know how to put it together. Because for me, the first versus video I made, I've made so many different shows on YouTube. And all of them, I had to go through this process of discovery where I was trying to figure out the edit, figure out the style. And you'll see my style has changed throughout the years. And my very first versus video... It was the Series of Unfortunate Events versus video, and I didn't even know that I was going to be doing more versus videos after that. I knew I was going to do more, but I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it for as long as I've been doing it. But the versus videos have been doing so well, so I was like, okay, I'll continue doing more after that. But it took me a month to make that first Series of Unfortunate Events versus video because I was figuring out my style. It always takes the longest with the first couple of videos when you're making a brand new show. It takes a, a while to do the first few episodes because you're still figuring it out and making changes. Once you find out and make those changes, then you can find ways of trying to get the video done quicker. And that's what I've done with my Versus videos. I've always tried to do that. But now I'm also trying to experiment more with them. So, yeah. My advice is to find out what it is you want to do and then try to put it all together in your head before you edit it. And then the other advice I'd give you is try to make it unique. Approach it from an aspect. Because when I do movies, there are so many YouTube creators out there. And I was like, no one's going to want to pay any attention to me. So then I was like, well, what can I do then? And then I thought of the Versus videos. I thought of quick movie reviews. I thought of Let's Binge Watch. And I've also got other shows in my head which I'm trying to make as well. Uh, so that's basically what you got to do. They don't always work because, for example, I did three-minute reviews and that was a show I put so much work and effort into, like filmmaking techniques I put into that. And in the end, it, I had to cancel the show because it wasn't getting the viewership in that I needed and I didn't really see a future with it, unfortunately. So then I tried some other stuff until I eventually got to the Versus videos. So yeah. Uh, but that's my advice, Is basically, is to... Do, is to do that. 
Matthew says, it was, it's crazy to me that the first video I watched of yours was the It's vs. It video. Yeah, it is crazy to think, and I'm very grateful that you're still here watching and joining the live streams now uh, ever since, too. Well, let's see. What do you think about Robert England in Stranger Things Season 4? He was that guy with no eyes, wasn't he? He was pretty good. Um, it was a cool little uh, like cameo in there for him. It was because the villain itself was very Freddy Krueger-like, so putting him in this season was very meta. Uh, I think that the most interesting thing Robert England has said recently is that he would like Kevin Bacon to be the next Freddy Krueger. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting to see how he would do that. He did good in Hollow Man, where he played the invis an evil, invisible man, so yeah. Adam Armand says, hey, Eric, have you seen Beware the Batman? I did. It was... A show that was focusing, that made Alfred like some sort of like MI6 agent and he was bold. I didn't like that. I tried a few, a couple episodes, it just really didn't work for me, then I stopped watching it. And they, for some reason that show was not allowed to use the bigger villains, which makes no sense to me. EJP says, where would you rank Joker among your favourite comic book movies? He's my number one favourite comic book. Uh, oh, you mean the movie? That's a good question. I don't know, probably in the top five, maybe. But at the bottom of the top five. The G-Gamer, how would you rank the Uncharted villains from the games? Lost Legacy included, if you've played it. I didn't play Lost Legacy, because it was uh, didn't have Nathan Drake in it, I didn't care. I was like, eh, they ended it with Uncharted 4. I'm happy if that's my final Uncharted game that I've played. Um... I can't even remember the villains very much, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I really can't say, because I haven't played them in a while. I do want to play them again, though, at some point. Let's see. Karen Singh says, When I was younger, I used to watch your videos, and for some reason it helped me with my English work and writing. I was getting higher grades by watching how you were using descriptive words. Huh, that's actually a very... That's very interesting, that is. Especially considering that I was homeschooled and I didn't go to school. The fact that that's uh, that actually helped you out at school is very interesting. Cool. I'm always very... I'm always very... Um, I pay very close attention to what I write in my script. In my scripts. So I'm glad that it worked out and helped you in that way. I Hate Anime says, What do you think about the practical animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's movies? Uh, I thought the, I thought it was actually pretty good, the animatronic work. I thought the production of the, of the animatronics was really good. George Phillips says, I loved Three Minute Reviews. Well, I'm glad you did. I loved them too. I even, when I look back at them, I'm like, I remember that. I had to, basically, I would make them in one week. That was my goal. Play and beat the game the first two days, three days tops, but really try to beat that game as, you know, as much as I can. And then the rest of the days, I would have to write the script and then record the video, including recording myself and then recording uh, the script, editing the whole thing. And I used to stay up to like six, seven, eight in the morning editing, especially the gunshot effects of the bullets hitting my wall, which was the wall here. Um, yeah, I would uh, record all of that and it and edit that, and it took so long to edit at night. So yeah. George Phillips says, are you going to watch Maxine? Yes, I am, when it comes out, because I loved Pearl. I thought that was a great movie. The first X movie, I thought was... They went way over the top. I'm surprised that movie wasn't an NC-17. It bloody well should have been. Uh, they went way too over the top with the sex in that movie. I really think they did. To the point that I was like, you know what, I get it. And I actually did press skip on my remote a couple times to fast forward through some. So yeah, very disappointed with how much they did there. I thought that was just way too much to a ridiculous extent. In fact, I would actually take points off the movie for that. The rest of the movie I thought was alright. It was a good slasher, but it wasn't as great as people were saying. Uh, but Pearl, though, that was great. That was really good. Rohan says, my friend is moving to Denton, which is not far away, but it's still sad seeing him go out of school to a new school. I can imagine that would be sad. I remember when I was a kid, it was uh, sad when I would separate from my friends at school. I was homeschooled later, but at the beginning, I did go to school, and I was sad when my friend wasn't there anymore. 
But the benefit that you guys have today at school is that you have your smartphones. Technology has advanced so much. Back then when I was younger, the only way we could call each other was through a landline, you know. So, and we were, I, I remember I was not really allowed on the phone anyway. It's like, if you're going to talk to your friends, talk to them at school. It wasn't really a thing to talk to them at home. I wasn't one of the messenger, I wasn't one of the, uh, was it MSM messenger or something that kids would use? I wasn't one of those kids. So yeah, for, for me, I wasn't able to connect with my friends again. You guys though, you have FaceTime, you have your phones, you got your iPads, you got so many means. So I'd say take advantage of those. But I do, I still know it is sad when a f best friend moves from one school to the other. Tom Bailey says, what do you think could be the next actor to play? Who do you think could be the next actor to play Hugo Strange? In my opinion, the best choice ever, and it sucks that it can never happen, is Christopher Lee. Yeah, Christopher Lee could have actually done a very good job with his voice and everything, couldn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would really be a very good Arkham City version of uh, Hugo Strange. Oh, hi, King of the Monsters 2021. Great to see you here. <clears throat> Uh, you've missed all the stories, though. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Says QJC. Huh, a couple more of you are coming into the stream. It's great to see more of you joining. I'm doing good. How about yourselves? We're doing Q&As right now, so super chats and Streamlabs chats and questions, I'm answering them. Is John Wick 5 not happening? It most likely will, which is a shame, but it will at some point. Uh, are you going to play Tekken 8, says Aritra. No, I'm not going to. I don't know, a lot of games nowadays, I feel like they just take content out, and you can't really trust them. And I didn't even play the previous Tekken game, I wanted to play it at some point, but there's just too much games to play, quite frankly, that I never quite, uh, I never quite complete them, so it's like I've got my own, and I've got games I want to replay after so many years, and games that I didn't get to play when I was younger, but I now do want to play, because i got a Steam Deck. You know, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's it's hard to keep track of games, but thing is, games are meant to be a fun hobby. They're not meant to be overwhelming, and that's kind of how I feel with them. The last game I played, the newest game, uh, was Spider Man Two for PS Five. Matthew says, "Did you ever think about doing original Pet Cemetery versus Pet Cemetery 2019?" I did, but I didn't go through with it. Uh, I'll re King of the Monster says, anyways, did you know that Minus One was possibly budgeted at 10 million instead of 15? Yeah, I heard that. And I mentioned that in my stream earlier. Uh, it's really impressive that they, what they were able to do. Uh, Cosmic, my ideas are essentially to make projects that haven't been made yet or that I was disappointed in. However, I need other things as well since doing stuff like that is such a monumental task. Exactly, it takes a long time. The first Versus video I did was a monumental task. It took me a whole month to make. Even the It vs. It video took me a whole month to make. Marvel Cinematic Disaster says, You should watch Gravity Falls. It's a really good show with a really good villain. Huh. Okay, I'll... I, I remember seeing the first two episodes, but I never got back into it. And now there's too much other stuff I want to watch, so... We'll see if I do. Uh, Neoma Verma says, What's your favourite Batman Arkham game? It's Batman Arkham City. That's my favourite one. Are you still waiting for Incredibles 3, says Yax. Uh, then no, there's no announcement or anything for it. And the, quite frankly, I think Brad Bird, the, how he just takes takes the piss with how long he takes to make a sequel to Incredibles. I'm not, I don't want to wait and think, um, when's he going to release it? When's he going to release it? Then another 15 years later, he releases 3, so the third one. So I'm just forgetting about it now. And Incredibles 2 was good, but it wasn't great, so... I have not watched another episode of, uh, I'm sorry, I have not watched Incredibles 2 again after the first time I saw it. I think I saw it the second time. The second time when it released that, I never watched it again. The Time Shadow says, will you start taking video requests or at least doing Patreon commissions videos? A long time ago I did, but I never stuck with it. But I don't know, let me ask you guys, would you, The Time Shadow says, will I start taking video requests or at least doing patreon commissions videos which means if on patreon you select a perk i'll make the actual video is that something you guys are interested in because it would be a higher perk to do something like that because that's that's not just a quick video that's putting actual time into watching a movie or something and doing a full-on production so i'll have to charge more for something like that that's not something i can just do 
one dollar i'll put everything aside and start working on that that's like a pro like he's like like the time shadow says that's like a proper commission that is would you guys want would you guys want that would you be interested in that George Phillips says, is it, a, is it unpopular opinion to say I'm not that into three or the Arkham games? I've Is it an unpopular, is it unpopular to say I'm not that into the Arkham games? I finished the first two and an hour or two into Arkham Knight and I don't really want to keep playing. No, that's not an unpopular opinion. Uh, it's not, it's not an unpopular opinion. If, if you don't like it, you don't like it. It's just, uh, Everyone's got their own taste. Maybe you need a break in between, because we certainly had a break from playing Arkham Asylum, then Arkham City, and then we had Arkham Origins, then Arkham Knight. If you play them all at once, it'll be too much, but if you take a break in between, maybe play the DLC challenges and everything, and take a break, it will be nicer. Certainly, I am getting more bored of them now, because I've played them so many times. I think Arkham City, I put a couple hundred hours into that. Or hundreds, I don't know how at this point. Let's see. Um... Adam Ahmed says, I would want a binge watch of the Green Lantern animated series. So I'm assuming that's in response to me saying, you know, commission videos. Elite says, not really. Alec Barton says, I would put it at $100 and yes. Hmm. Well. Uh... Hmm. Okay, I'll give it a try. I'll try to commission a video on my Patreon. And it will just be for a couple people, maybe even one. I don't know, but I'll... I'll put... I'll try to put something out on Patreon, and I'll let you guys know when I do it. So let me see. Let me see who said that. Uh, let me see who suggested that. The Time Shadow. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to write your name down here on my here uh, notebook. Commission videos. Okay, I've written that down. And it's because I never normally wanted to charge people too much for stuff, but it's like, if you... I suppose if it's an option for people that can afford to do something like that and want to do that, there's nothing wrong with that in that case. Um, okay, I'll I'll, cons I'll consider looking into that. I like how Alec Barton says, I would put it at $100 and yes, meaning that you're advising me to do $100 and saying yes, you would be interested in that. I'll be curious to see what the rest of you guys think if you are all at all interested in that. Let's just quickly find your comment again. I'll consider doing that, but it depends on which shows, because verses take a lot longer than, say, quick movie reviews. Okay, then there's Alec Barton, who I'm going to take a picture of your your comment as well, and write it down. Uh, let's see, the Time Shadow says, I think that would be ideal, since there's a lot of people, myself included, that ask for a lot of specific videos. Okay, I'll I'll consider I'll consider doing that. I I've only seen Adam Ahmed. I've only seen a couple episodes of the Green Lantern animated series when I was younger, but I didn't really get that far into it. Um, okay, then I'll I'll look into that. 
I'll look into that and I'll put it up there for the very, I'm assuming the very few people that would want, that would be interested in something like that. And I'll rank them up higher based on what the videos are because, you know, some videos like Versus take a heck of a lot longer. Other videos as well, like um, Let's Binge Watch also take incredibly long. So I'll have to look into it, but then yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll put it in, I'll put the announcement on my uh, community post, so keep an eye on that. I'll let you guys know when the live streams. And uh, yeah, I'll look into that. So if anyone's interested, yeah, you can have a commissioned video. You can request something and I'll make it. I did it once for Adam Grunther a long, long time ago because he actually uh, donated to get a quick movie review of something. I think it was Into the Spider-Verse. And I did that video, which I initially, would, I think I wouldn't have done. So yeah, you got Adam Grunther to thank for that one. So yeah, if you guys want to do that, I'll, I'll look into it. I don't expect many of you to, but there's going to certainly be sounds like there's a few of you, and I'll I'll look into that. Okay. Will you? Matthew says, will you announce the How to Train Your Dragon Versus video when it's finished? It's not finished. It's because, like I said, I need to get... I think one of you actually asked me when I was talking. They said, uh, have I got my Patreon goals where it needs to be in order to make the How to Train Your Dragon Trilogy Versus video? And I don't think it... I don't think it has. It hasn't got there yet. Because uh, I need, like I said, 100 patrons. Right now I've got members. Patreon, I've done something weird, which is members, where people that just follow and just get updates on what Patreon videos you put out, it combines them in the number, where that's that, that's not the amount of patrons that are actually uh, paying for the content, if you know what I mean. So those are more people that are just getting the newsletter, essentially. They're not really subscribed to your Patreon. So once I get 100 of them, right now I think I'm at, last I checked, was it 55 or something? That's where I seem to be at right now, so... Yeah, but like I said, once I get to 100, I will get to work on it. Or heck, if someone... if I When I put up that new thing on Patreon where I... Where someone can, can uh, request a Versus video, who knows, maybe I'll just make it then if someone requests that, who knows. But yeah, so yeah, in terms of the memberships, uh, yeah, need some need more to get to the hundred point. And when I do, then I'll do the How Train Your Dragon. So yeah, I'll look into that. Isa Bague says, "What's your favorite Spider-Man movie?" <clears throat> George Phillips, "Despicable Me Four trailer dropped. It's using Sweet Child of Mine. That's interesting. Oh, Despicable Me Four trailer." I haven't. I saw the first movie a long time ago, but I can't remember it because it was that long ago. Like back when it came out, first came out. So I need to see it again. Despicable Me Two. I saw. I think half the movie when I was at my cousin's house a long time ago, because because it was on TV and we turned the TV on and it just happened to be halfway through. Uh, the third movie I've never seen, and now there's a fourth movie. I might do it. I think I'll do a trailer reaction for my Patreon uh, either later today or tomorrow, and then you guys can uh, check that out. But yeah. Just got back, says Batman's Gamer. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, the Time Shadow, for that, re for that request. That would be very interesting. Are you a Patreon member already, are you, the Time Shadow? Okay, Cosmic, I apologize for missing this because I can tell you you really wanted to ask this. Uh, would you consider watching one or any of my projects? It'll take a long time, but would you be open to that? Honestly, it'd be a dream come true for me, but obvious if you don't have time or something, I understand. It depends on the moment, so send it to me, and then I'll take a look. Because it was Yako the Volcanic Muto who also sent me some videos of his, and those were very long, and I couldn't watch them all. So I did watch, I think, a good, was it 10 minutes of one of them? Um... And I gave him some feedback. So yeah, I could do the same thing for you as well. Yeah. The Movie King 3000 says, 
What do you think about the leaked video of Karen Foggy on set of Daredevil Born Again? Yeah, they were there with uh, Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock, and the three were having a fun conversation, it looked like. Um, I was glad to see them there, but it also got me mad that Marvel were just, like, looking at them, they still play the characters so well, you can just see, see that there, the, the chemistry between the three. And the fact that they just wanted to just kill them off, the MCU wanted to, it kind of got me angry seeing them there. I was like, they're only here because you know that people are not liking what you're making now, Marvel and Kevin Feige. That's the only reason they're there. Otherwise, you would have just still kept them dead and just replaced them with wannabe disney characters that would interact with Daredevil. So yeah, it got me annoyed, but I was happy that they were there. But I still don't have faith in the show, because they got the Punisher showrunner, and he's going to be controlled by Marvel. So it's not even going to be a proper R-rated R -rated show, I don't think. The Pickle the pickle Tickler, that is a funny username. Watch the new 2024 movie, Atlantic Rim. Search it. Okay, I hope I don't regret this. Do you say it was a 2024 movie? Because I have not seen, don't see a 2024 movie here. I see a 2018 movie, but no 2024 movie. And it's got a 1.9 out of 10, whatever this is. Yeah, I'm not going to, I don't really see much from that. Cosmic says, how should I send it to you when it's done? I'll probably just make a trailer for it and send that rather than a whole episode. Yeah, do something like that. Despicable Me Feather Guardian says, Despicable Me, Despicable Me 3 is a terrible movie that I'm hoping the fourth one is as good as Rise of Gru. I haven't seen 3, uh, but I know it did make a good amount of money, so again, DreamWorks and Universal are beating Disney at the animated game. Uh, Gregory, good to see you again, buddy, says, What score do you give Rise of the Planet of the Apes? I think I gave it a 9 out of 10, if I remember correctly. I really did enjoy that movie. Either a high 8 or a low 9, or a 9, I can't remember. George Phillips says a new trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is going to drop tomorrow, apparently. Well, that's another trailer reaction on my Patreon that uh, you guys will get. George Phillips says, are you excited for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? I'm excited, but I'm not sure about James Acaster, Acaster being in it. I think I've heard people talk about him being cast in it. Did he have some words to say about the 2016 female Ghostbusters and the people that weren't supporting it? Unless I'm remembering cor incorrectly. Mm, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sandman2000 says, Have you played Call of Duty Zombies? When I was younger, yes. I played at a friend's house and I played on the iPod Touch game. That was back, back when the iPod Touch games and stuff were actually good. Favorite Ben 10 episode? Uh, there's a lot of episodes. I can't really think of it right now because it's been a long time. But the episode where Ben was... Uh, was... Uh, being mind controlled was it by an illusionist or someone someone who was like you have tipping the stopwatch in his face and then using him that was a good episode the secret of the omnitrix movie was amazing and it was dark as well and violent in a lot of places that was a good movie that was a really good cartoon network movie it was epic it was so good uh jess says hey eric are you nervous nervous to see the deadpool 3 trailer I'm not nervous, if anything, I'm just hoping that Ryan Reynolds was left to his devices and so was Hugh Jackman, and I'm nervous that the MCU and Disney and Kevin Feige tried to get their fingers into the project. That's what makes me nervous, I hope they left Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman to the project themselves. Feige has no clue what he's doing and I, he should not touch those R-rated characters. Gregory Bronstein says, favourite DreamWorks movie? Uh, Shrek, the first one. Feather Guardian, a hypnosis. Yes, that's it. It's, it's hypnosis. Like I was struggling with the word there. The Dark Lord says Toby, but that's just me. Matthew says, are there any movies that make you feel uncomfortable after watching them? Uh, not really after watching them, but probably uncomfortable whilst watching them. I remember X was one movie. Like I said, I had way too much sex in there. Like it was NC-17 level stuff, and they should have... A lot of people said that as well, that it was NC-17 level. And they were saying they should have uh, put less in. But And people are even saying, how did it even get an R rating? Which just goes to show how the rating system in the US is corrupt. They don't care. It's all about selling tickets. Whereas in the UK here, they take the rating system very seriously. So 
we have two R ratings here, 15 and 18. One's a normal R, the other one's a hard, hard R. And 18 works technically like an NC-17, except imagine if it was an NC-18 rating. That's how it works. Feather Guardian says, Harry Potter would be a good Wolverine. You mean Daniel Radcliffe? I don't know. I feel like when I see him, I just see Harry Potter. And I feel like outside of his Harry Potter work and outside of the woman in black, he's not a very good actor, in my opinion. I feel like he's he's just too recognizable as Harry Potter. It's hard to separate that. But I hear rumors that he might be in it because people have been fan casting him or something. So as a multiverse thing in Deadpool 3, they might put him in there. I heard a rumor that there's going to be multiple Wolverines because Marvel don't know which one will be good. So they're hoping to put him in there. And then based on what the audience, which one the audiences like the most when the movie comes out, that's the one they're going to put in as their, as their MCU Wolverine in the future. And that just shows they got no balls, quite frankly. It's like they should be able to say, all right, this is the best version of the character because we're going to do this, 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 and this. We're going to be creative. We're going to do this and that. But instead, it just shows they don't know what they're doing. So they're saying, let's just put a few in there. Whichever one they like the most is the one we'll go with. And quite frankly, I think the one that people will end up liking the most is going to be Hugh Jackman. Everyone else is just not going to compare to him, I think. Elite says, all right, all right. Already, I'm going to he all righty. I'm going to head out. Take care, Eric. Yeah, no problem. It was very good having you here, Elite. Thank you very much for joining the stream. We'll do another thirty minutes of the stream, guys, and then I'll head out. So, any questions you guys want to ask me? If I still haven't asked, answered one of your questions, put it in the super chats because, like I said, the list keeps on scrolling. Spirit Hero says Marvel seriously needs to stop their whole multiverse crossover bullshit. Yeah, they do, but it's not going to stop until Secret Wars, which is apparently what they're going to do. They're going to do it all the way up till Secret Wars. Is it half past ten where you live, says Yax. Close. It's half past nine. Gary Loke says, have you seen all the James Bond movies and which one is your favorite movie? I've only seen all the Pierce Brosnan movies and the Daniel Craig movies. I haven't seen any of the ones, the older ones beyond that. But uh, one of my favorite uh, movies was Skyfall. I really enjoyed that one. I also liked Goldeneye. That was fun. Alec Barton says, about Disney making a new Tron movie and your thoughts? Uh, I haven't seen the first Tron movie, but I did see the second one, and I didn't like it. So, yeah, if they're going to make a third one, uh, yeah, they can they can make it, but I don't think I'm going to, uh, I don't think I'm going to care, personally. I was never really attached to Tron. Uh, let's see, um... The Movie King 3000 says, What are you going to think about the, the theory that the only reason why they are bringing back Karen Foggy for three episodes is so they can kill them off, so they can use the old footage? Is that a theory floating around? They should know better not to do that, because I heard there's going to be not 18 episodes, but then again, they did shoot nine of them, about nine. So that would make 12 episodes. But then again... Are they just going to rush, make one final episode after the nine that they made so they can just tie it all up and say the episode, the show is over? I don't know. That sounds like a mess to me, but I wouldn't put it past Marvel to do something like that because a lot of their shows have been messes. Echo is another example of that. That would be very bad if they did that. And I think everyone would get pissed off at them. So I think they wouldn't do that. Given that they restarted from scratch, I don't think they would do that. That would just piss people off. The Time Shadow says, I'm not a patron member as of yet. Oh, where did your question go? Oh, there. I'm not a patron member as of yet, but I th might have to get my skates on if this does turn into a thing. Huh, so you really do want, uh, you really do want the, uh, thing where I, uh, commission videos. What type of video do you want? Quick movie review versus let's binge watch all of them? What are you interested in seeing? Like, which videos of mine do you want commissioned? Deep Man says, is Ben 10 live action coming? That's a rumor I heard, and the rumor was that if they did, they wanted to bring Tom Holland in. So if that's the case, I hope it's not coming. Uh, Matthew says, you said you like Split, but what do you think about Glass? I liked Glass. 
when I first saw it, but then the second time I saw it, all the problems just hit me, and my score went from being quite high to being quite low. Uh, the prob I like the movie up until they all get put into the facility, because then it's just nonsense, especially in your second viewing when you know it's all bogus. It's like, why are we spending so much time here? It was fun when they were out there, but now all this listening to- it's, it has very little rewatch value, the Glass movie does. The only thing that keeps you watching is the performance from James McAvoy and Samuel Jackson and even Bruce Willis, but yeah, I think Shyamalan really just kind of screwed the pooch there, which is a shame because he did, had such potential, Glass did, and he made a movie that was just nonsense in the end. Cosmic Studio says, hey Eric, I'm gonna go because I'm up early tomorrow, but love your content and thank you for agreeing to watch one of my projects, aiming for it to be Moon Knight. Really appreciate that. Have a good night, man. You have a good night too. Thank you very much for joining the stream. It was great having you here. Alec Barton says, Pirates of the Caribbean is peak Disney. It was for their live action stuff. Rohan says, there's a YouTuber who hasn't seen Across the Spider-Verse and he says he doesn't care because he says he's a DC fan. Well, that's his prerogative, but he is missing out on something really good. Gregory says, Indiana Jones 4, while having flaws and not living up to the original trilogy, is still a fun time and better than Temple of Doom, aka the black sheep of the original trilogy. I thought Temple of Doom was better, but I still did have enjoyment with the fourth movie. Jess says, Doc, uh, Deadpool 3 needs to be left to the creators and be special. I do agree with that. Uh, J-I-S-L-H uh, says, Hello, have you heard there... That there are, are a new Jurassic World movie coming soon, and the writer from the Jurassic Park 1 and 2 is coming back. I have heard that, but he's also written a lot of crap as well, if you look at his filmography. So, I would recommend you take a look. So, it could be good, could be bad. But we'll see. One of you said, is it night? I can't find where your question is, but if you look over here, at the window, from what you can see, it is night. So, yeah, it's, it's dark now. Yuck says, Criminal, how Echo is part of the Defenders collection. Yeah, it is. Adam Grunther says, Did you see Masters of the Universe Revel... Oh, damn, where'd your question... Oh, there... No, 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 that's not where it is. Here. Did you see Masters of the Universe Revolution? I haven't, but I've heard about it, and I'm confused. Is it season two of that He-Man show, which I covered on my Instagram? Because it looks the same, but when you go on IMDb, I think it only said season one. So it's like, is it still that Kevin Smith show? Or is it another show? Is it continuing, but it's got different creators? What's hap What's the deal with that one? Adam Grunther says, Glass was terrible. David Dunn's death was insulting to all fans of Unbreakable. It really was. And he didn't really do anything in the movie either. And he just gets his... Not, he gets killed with a bloody puddle. Like, seriously, a puddle. It was sad, though. I will say that the music from the composer was good, and you did feel the sadness. But, yeah, it wasn't... It's like, they just didn't treat his character well. It is season two, yes. Okay, that's good to know, then. Is it... Does Kevin Smith still writing it, and is it any good? Is He-Man the main character? Because I didn't get mad like other people did when he wasn't. But I was kind of shocked that they even did that. I thought that was the wrong choice to do. They should have done... The first few episodes where He-Man is there, then the middle, if the show didn't like treat the whole season like a three-act structure, the first act, He-Man is there, and he's doing a lot of great and amazing stuff, and he's part of the story. The middle of the second act, he dies, then the third act, he comes back. That's what they should have done, but instead, doing the format they did, I can tell why people got really annoyed by it. And even I did get annoyed by it as well, because I was like, I wanted to watch He-Man in this show, but we're several episodes in, and we're not seeing... He-Man in it. When he was in it, it was really cool, and it's exactly what I wanted to see, and the music was amazing. His theme was so good. I was listening to it when I was editing videos and stuff, but I was kind of sad that they were taking screen time away from him. I really wish they did better with 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 him. Uh, Adam Grunther says, same people are attached. The only person who didn't come back was Sarah Michelle Gellar as Teela. Yeah, she did say a few things, which I can't remember now. It was a long time ago, but I did remember. I was thinking she should react better to the reaction because it is understandable why people were mad about that. I mean, He-Man is the guy's show, straight out. And She-Ra was the girl's show. And Netflix had She-Ra. So I don't know why they tried to make the the women characters, the female characters, like the the dominant characters for most of the show. Because that's kind of like in uh, She-Ra, putting the male side characters, making them 
the main characters of the show and killing She-Ra off for most of the season. Could you imagine that? It's like, I would say that is unfair if they did that to She-Ra. And likewise, I'm saying that's unfair that they're doing that to He-Man. They wouldn't do it the other way, but they did it with he- with He-Man. That was just... That was playing dirty to me, that was. It felt like Hollywood was following a trend. We had The Last Jedi, where how they mistreated Luke Skywalker. And now they were mistreating... Um, uh, the uh, He-Man, especially the viewers who wanted to watch He-Man. I thought they should have done better with that. But when he came back, I that was when I enjoyed it the most. Adam Grunther is better. And yes, He-Man is the main character this time. That is so good to hear. Because I heard that the new Scott Pilgrim anime show also does what He-Man did. It's like, dudes, you should advertise that. You shouldn't try to hide that from people. Or just stop doing that, you know. It's not really something I appreciate. Mark Hamill, a, ske- a Skeletor, is also a bigger threat and gets more to do. He does. Okay, that's good. That sounds fun. I'll, I'll give that a watch. How many episodes? I can't remember. And Adam Grunther, what did you think of the first season where I recovered it on my Instagram? I remember you commented saying you were surprised I enjoyed it considering a lot of people were pissed at it. Jess says, Eric, TMNT 2012 series had comedic comedic series and dark moments in it. Have you seen these before? I did. I watched the first season, the first season and three quarters of season two. And then I dropped off. I remember we were kind of moving house at the time and stuff. And it was, um, we were moving house. And I think I kind of just lost track after a while. And I was like, all right, I can't remember what happened in the previous episode. And now I've uh, missed out on these. I only really watched it for my younger brother because he was growing up. I wanted him to grow up with a Turtles show to watch as a, you know, as a kid. And we both would watch that together. It was fun, but we never went through with it all the way to the end. Five episodes, Adam Grunther. That's good. Um, That's that's good. If that, that, it should be easy to go through those. I think it was six. Was it six in this first season? But yeah. The G Gamer says, what's what's a divisive movie from audiences that you love and a divisive movie that you hated? That's a good question, but it requires me to think. A divisive movie from audiences that I liked. Um, does Guardians of the Galaxy 3 count? Because that was apparently a divisive movie. Um, so maybe Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And in terms of... Um, where was the other part of your question? And a divisive movie that I hated. Um, I think the movie that I hated was... It was a horror movie. That was considered divisive and it just kind of pissed me off. But I can't remember what it was. Ooh, look at that. I've got a $5 Streamlabs chat. Let me answer who that is. A device. I have. I have to get back to you on that one. I can't remember. Um, let's see. Uh, Jonah White, who has done a five dollar super chat. Uh, smile. No, smile wasn't divisive though, was it? Yeah, I still need to think about that. Did you watch the Marvel Defenders show? Uh, also, I'm not really sure why they cancelled Daredevil show. I just finished the series and was sad when I couldn't move on to the next season. Yeah, now you know how we feel, because we were looking so forward to season four, but then it got cancelled. Uh, did I watch Marvel Defenders show? Yes, I did. In fact, I did a Let's Binge Watch video. That was my first Let's Binge Watch video uh, that I did with the Defenders. So if you want to check that out, check it out. Uh, and the other part of your question... They cancelled the Daredevil show because Disney Plus, they were going to come out with their streaming service and they were like, well, we don't need to share these characters with Netflix anymore. We want that on our streaming service. And now look where they've gone with heroes on their streaming service. That's why it got cancelled. And Marvel thought they could do better. And that's why they've hired different people to write Daredevil. And they screwed up on the film in the first nine episodes. Then they've done some more. So, yeah, they're just really incompetent Marvel, thinking they can do better, but they couldn't. Thank you very much for the $5 super chat, by the way, Jonah. I really do appreciate that. Your $15 super chat before, and uh, your $15 Streamlabs super chat before, and your $5 Streamlabs super chat after, I really do appreciate that. But yeah, I was sad when I couldn't move on to the next, and I feel like we're still not getting a true, proper next 
you know, season four on Netflix, Daredevil either. Now, let's see. Matthew says, you weren't kidding when you said that your 2023 worst of list would be controversial, but I agree with most of the stuff you said. I told you guys it would be controversial, and I was I was almost thinking of putting uh, Mutant Mayhem in third or fourth place. I was thinking, maybe you guys wouldn't hate me as much if I did that. Or maybe it wouldn't be as controversial. Controversial, but not as. But then I was like, no, if I'm being true to myself here, and this is my list, I really just did not like that Turtles movie. So that's why I did it. Uh, let's see... Um, other questions. I know Adam Grunther answered my question. That about He Man. He says, "Let's see. Damn it, it went away." Here it is. Adam Grunther says about season one of He Man. I wasn't a fan personally. I just never cared for He Man in general. Also, can't stand Orko. I was only there for Mark Hamill as Skeletor. Season two gave me what I wanted. Okay, that's interesting. But if you're not Never cared for He-Man in general? How did Season 2 give you more of what you wanted? Was it a better story? Was there more action? What was it? I'm curious about that. Feel free to answer, because I do genuinely want to know. It was 10 episodes of the first season. I like how you guys, like, correct me on this stuff when I'm unsure. Good to know you guys have my back on this kind of stuff. Jess says, Eric, do you, wanna, do you want Doctor Doom as the next Thanos for the Doom Dynasty and Secret Wars? I don't know. I feel like they should introduce him properly. But the thing is, if they can't do Kingpin... F I say this in my Let's bi in my uh, let's Binge Watch video, but I'll tell you guys right now. But I wrote this yesterday. They wanted Kang to be the big bad of the MCU, the next Thanos. And they put him in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, where he ended up being just, like, a joke. Someone who got beat by Ant-Man. And then they're saying, yep, he's still going to be in there. And then he wasn't. I mean, still, he's still going to be in the, the MCU movies going forward. But it's like, yeah, what's the point now? You've just weakened him. There's no point in putting him, making him the future of the MCU. And now, apparently with Kingpin, they're saying they want him to be the new street-level bad guy. But then they made Echo, and they ended it with him running off like a little bitch. And now they're saying he's going to be the street-level villain going forward. It's like, what are you doing? If you want to... If you plan to make these villains like the big overarching bad, then you've got to establish them properly. you got to make them feared. But instead, Kingpin got beat by a newbie, Kate Bishop, in Hawkeye. Essentially, Kate Bishop, uh, uh, essentially Kingpin got beat by a little girl, and he's super-powered in Hawkeye. He also got shot in the eye in Hawkeye by Echo. And on top of that, he also got beat by Echo again, and he didn't land a single hit in the Echo show. And he ended up crying like a little girl. And what did you, what did you do to me? What did you do? Like, it was so silly. I'm like, and then Kevin Feige's like, yeah, the, or, or the people at Marvel are saying, yeah, he's going to be the big street level bad going forward. I'm like, I don't want him now. You just ruined his character. And when you look at what the Kingpin has done, he's been having his ass handed to him in the MCU. But if you look at the things that he's done, like, you know, what has he done to be a threat? The only thing he's done is punch an ice cream man a few times. I mean, people said that scene was good, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty pathetic if that's what he's done in the MCU, and he's had, like, three appearances so far, hasn't he? Or was it two? Basically, I don't like what they're doing with Kingpin or what they've done with Daredevil, seriously. Uh, Gregory says, also, sorry, my internet was glitching. Can you answer my question? If I see it again, I'll answer it. Oh, uh, Iron Warrior, a $2 super chat. Thank you very, very much, buddy. Again, for the Super Chats, I keep saying they help, and they seriously do. Glass Onion or Knives Out? Uh, Glass Onion, I liked. Mark Hamill, Anthony says, Mark Hamill, Skeletor, sounds like the Joker. He does in places. Even Fire Lord Ozai in Avatar The Last Airbender sounds a bit like Joker at times, too. The Time Shadow. I'm assuming you're watching my video uh, about 20 minutes behind or 10 minutes behind, because you do answer my questions, but it's quite a while later. You says, I think I'm most likely go to go for Versus videos. Okay, but Versus videos take longer, so the commission on that will have to be higher, but I'll try. I'll give it a try. And also, when I do Versus videos of movies that I want to compare, I've got a lot to say. But if someone gives me the two movies that they want me to compare, I wonder what the length of the video would be. Will I have a lot to say? Will I be like, okay, I haven't got much to say? It's, it'll be an interesting experiment, I think, for the both of us. I think I'll have to I'll have to see. This whole thing would be an interesting experiment. Th Tharan says, Did you hear about how Cassie Lang was recasted? What, is that a new story that came out or something? 
about how she was recasted. Because I didn't uh, hear about that. Uh, let's see. Adam Armand says, Did you like the Green Lantern animated series? I only saw a couple episodes. I never watched it all the way through, but I wasn't into the animation personally. Rohan says, I just watched Masters of the Universe Revolution, and I thought it was good, an improvement over Masters of the Universe Revolution. That's good. Uh, the Dark Lord says, thoughts on the new Bad Batch trailer? I've done a, pa uh, a trailer reaction on my Patreon for it, so I don't know if I posted that and announced it to you guys. I probably forgot to do it, because I was going to do it, but I got tired, so I think I forgot. Uh, basically, uh, uh, yeah, do uh, check out my Patreon. You'll see a trailer reaction to it there. So... Let's see. Alec Barton says, Hey, Captain Eric, you might have missed a super chat. I don't think I did. Uh, Iron Warrior's super chat was the next one, and I did get to it. Jess says, Eric, Ga Guardians 3 just got nominated for the Oscars for Best VFX. Are you happy about this? Yeah, that movie deserved a nomination because it, it shows that when James Gunn has, a, has completed a script first, he completed a script... He knew what material he wanted, and he did not waste money like what the rest of the MCU projects have done, because they clearly don't know what they want. The VFX artists have said this, so that's why they have to keep reworking working on reshoot footage, and that means they have to throw away their old footage. So, James Gunn basically showed how it was done, and how they should be doing it. So yeah, the fact that the others got ignored, but this got nominated, it's good. I just wish there was some kind of, like, nomination for bad VFX... And they could have put Ant-Man 3 up there, and the Marvels. It could, would have been, you know, great to say, try better next time. Adam Grunther says, It gave me a better story, action, and more Mark Hamill as Skeletor, the main thing I was looking for. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I'll definitely give it a watch. And I like that there's only five episodes. Okay, we got ten more minutes on the stream, guys, and then it'll be two and a half hour stream, and then I'll be signing out. So if there's any questions you want to ask, if you want me to get to see them, uh, that's called the Razor. You mean the Razzies, Adam Grunther? Razzies, isn't that though for like worst movie? Do they do worst VFX? Because if they do, Marvel, they should definitely be up there. Did you hear that She-Hulk season two got canceled because they said we blew our budget and Disney said no? Well, yeah, the thing is, what did they even blow their budget on? I mean, if you read the scripts for those She-Hulk episodes, there was nothing going on in those. Goodbye, Alec Barton. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, good that it got canceled. I don't want to see no more of that. Uh, I was open to seeing She-Hulk as a character. I think Tatiana Mislani is a very good actress. But the character, the way she was just dunking on Hulk and saying a lot of mean things to him, and it was just, again, it was what I don't like. It's boys versus girls. It was activist filmmaking, if you want to call it filmmaking. It was a lot of activist writing. It felt like these people, these writers that Marvel got had never written a script before, and they just took their social media posts and co incorporated it into the script and said, here, this is what we wrote. It's like the show wasn't about anything. What they did to Blonsky, what the hell did they do to him? Embarrassing. Adam Armand says, bye, Eric, I'm going to see you later. Okay, take care. I'm going to end the stream in 10 minutes. So, yeah, if you guys want to stick around for that, then I'll say goodbye to all of you. Do you still think Zack Snyder's Justice League is a 9 out of 10? I still do think it's a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Eric, would it be awesome if Michael Bay directed Fast and Furious? No, 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 no. I don't like watching any of his movies lately. Although I've heard he's made a, that Ambulance movie is pretty good, I've heard. But I need to see that. Uh, Adam Armand says, hey, Eric, I'm going now, but I will see your next video soon. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, take care and thanks for joining the live stream. Jess says, She-Hulk will get beaten by Gamora for its terrible CGI. B Gamora... Gamora wasn't CGI. She looked uh, good. She was just painted. But Adam Armand says, but Eric, I mean on writing, acting, character, and music standards. Okay. Uh, 
Aritra says, have you seen Demon Slayer? Has some of the has some of the best animation I've ever seen. I have seen Demon Slayer, and I do remember when we were watching season three, I said to my brother, I was like, wow. Season three is the one with the uh I'm not counting the movies uh, as being seasons, but season three, from what I've seen, is the one when they're on that sword island where they that place where they the village where they make the swords for Demon Slayers. That had beautiful animation. Like, I was shocked at how good-looking it was, especially in that final episode. And it all got tears out. Like, it got some tears out of me. It did as well. Uh, let's see. Um... People seem to fail to realize that the actors don't write the material and like jackasses they attack them on the internet. Just ask Rachel Zegler and Kelly Marie Tran. Uh, sometimes I really hate the internet for that. Yeah, I agree. I've always said this. I've said that you blame the studio executives and, you know, the people at the top uh, and the writers. You don't blame, and the producers, but you don't blame the actors. They just take on these jobs, essentially, is what they're trying to do. But... Ra Kelly Marie, Marie Tran I agree with she didn't deserve what she got Rachel Zegler kind of bought some of it on herself because yes they wrote it that way but she was not helping with the way she was disrespecting the movie and she kind of got everyone pissed off not just people that were right wing but people that were left like basically everyone got mad at her <laughs> like even Gen Z were on TikTok basically mocking what she was saying and saying that essentially how dare you essentially so she kind of put that on herself, and it would have been fine if she apologized or gave some sort of an apology, but instead she was, like, doing, blaming men for it and saying, I'm sick and tired of men. Like, she was, like, using a song lyric to basically say that. And at one point, I think she pointed the finger at, uh, in one of her Instagram posts or something. It's like she was not making the situation better. It felt more like, yeah, I said that, and I don't care. So if she said, if she corrected herself in a more humbled way, it would have been, I would have been like, I would have agreed with you on her, but she was not helping, so. She came across as someone who thought that she was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It just came across very much like she was criticizing the movie for things that it wasn't. For certain things, like a prince that stalked Snow White, that's not exactly what happened. Uh, oh, you left another comment. Rachel Zegler gave her opinion on a movie from the 30s. It wasn't that warranted. Well, I don't know how ugly it got because I didn't delve into the whole thing. So if it got really ugly, maybe not. But it was her response I don't think was warranted either. The way she responded. But, uh... Yeah, it was... She's kind of given herself a reputation. It's not a good one. But she should have... I think she should have handled it better. She should have. Adam Grunther says, didn't hear the men thing, but still doesn't justify it. Well, if they wish death threats on her and things, then yes, that's not justified. But people getting annoyed with her for the stance she took, if anything, I think it was a good thing because Disney, of all people, I feel like they were just running with that kind of stuff. But if, and especially with Star Wars when The Last Jedi and stuff came out. But it's like now they're trying to pull back on that. But regardless, all this stuff that they're doing, it is turning people against Disney. Disney seems to be the most hated studio. Like there's been polls that have been going out. And most people said Disney is the most hated studio, when usually they were the most loved studio. And a lot of that does come down to not only their lack of quality content now, but also down to the fact that they keep pointing fingers at audiences. And that's something they should never do. You know, if they would not be standing if it wasn't for their audience. And it'd be fine if they just pointed at the toxic audience, but they just bundled a lot of people in there. People that had genuine criticisms. They were throwing the sexism label on them as well and everything, and it was just, it was just gross, that whole thing. So yeah, Disney have to kind of like work themselves out of that. Uh, let's see. George Phillips says, Rachel Zegler had the job loads of girls, g the job loads of girls would dream of playing and she treats Snow White like, the th like, like that the death threats were way too far, though if there was. You need to say it a bit clearer. Maybe I read it wrong. Girls would dream of playing and she treats Snow White like... Like, crap, I think he wanted to say. The death threats were way too far if there was. Yeah, that is always f too far. Except for Amber Heard, because she sent those to Johnny Depp when that wasn't warranted, and he says that they were gonna... He wrote a letter to do so they can do a divorce quietly. But then she sent a, She accused him of those things that he wasn't, and sent an angry mob after him that were calling for his head on a stick. And then all of a sudden, when that mob found out that she was lying, it found its way back to her. So she bought that on herself. She's the only one where I'm like... 
I don't agree with that. I still wouldn't send their threats to set those threats her way. But she kind of, like, bought it on herself by doing that. But, yeah, Z Z Rachel Zegler did not deserve death threats. But she, quite frankly, it was it is a Disney problem at the end of the day. I think, is Adam Grunther saying that right now? Movies are worse, but I'm still more angry with Warner Brothers for what Zazzle has done. Oh, no, you say something else. It was still a Disney problem. Because whatever she said, it was pretty much based on what Disney were trying to do with their movie. So, Yeah. Disney, if Disney can be angry at her, but they should also be angry at themselves because what she was saying was ultimately stuff that was going to happen in that new live action movie. But now they're delayed it a whole year because they know they're going to have to reshoot the whole thing. That's another thing they're going to have to reshoot. Um, and yes, Zaslov had. I don't have respect for that guy anymore. I thought at the beginning he could have been a different type of studio executive, but he's really just, in a way, he's worse in his own way. I can't remember the kid's name in Extraction 2, buddy. I really can't. We've got two minutes left. Any questions or super chats or Streamlab chats? You put them through now. I'll answer them all. And we've got a Streamlabs chat, which... Did I miss this one or did I already take this one? I must have already taken this one. Oh, yeah. I already did take that one. Yeah. That was an old one. I must have saw on my phone. But yeah, Adam Grunther, I do agree. It doesn't justify death threats or something or anything like that. But I think Disney, I've heard a lot of rumors on the inside that Disney are trying to change the way their, their structure in the company, the way they talk, the way they operate. Because for, when, when, like, around 2015, 2016 onwards, they've really been operating in a way that has not been good. They've been insulting their customers, even the ones that had genuine criticisms. And now they're trying to move away from that because they've just caused... They've just caused... They're not a company that people love anymore. Everyone loved Disney, but now it's, that's not the case anymore. Um... Oh, Adam Grunther has done a $5 super chat. Thank you very much, buddy. Right towards the end as well. And this will probably be the last thing I take. Uh, the last question I take, unless another super chat comes in, in which case I'll take that too. But yeah, this will be the last one that I take. So, F Adam Grunther says, favorite villain from the boys besides Homelander and Soldier Boy. It was that villain woman, that Nazi bitch that they called her from uh, the second season. What was her name in the boys season two? Starl, not Starlight. No, no, no. Ooh, what was her name? Stormfront, that was it, Stormfront. Um, she was a very good villain, so I'd say her. She was a very good uh, villain. Yeah, I like how a lot of you guys are. Like I said, you always have my back. I love that about all of you guys. Gregory saying, please answer my question. Um, is your overall verdict for Crystal Skull good or decent? Also, what do you think of the Matilda the Musical? Didn't you see my versus video of uh, Indiana Jones 4 and 5? I gave my uh, opinion and review on that. I thought it was decent. It gets worse the more you think about it, but still, I think it's decent. Yeah, George Phillips. It's alright. Just, just, just keep that in mind for the next live stream. Yeah, I understand, Jess. The, the boys does have a lot of nudity, but if you can skip it, that's normally what I would have done when I was younger. But so long as this... It did go on for a bit long in places. I did skip it. I will say that. Whenever they go on for too long, I tend to skip them. Especially if it's just being done for gross-out humor, which or just for the gross-out factor, which a lot of them tend to be. All right then, everyone. I think that is basically going to be it. We've uh, reached the end of the stream. I had so much fun chatting with you guys. I always have so much fun. I've been getting so busy lately, both in my personal life and with YouTube, that I seem to forget, you know, to respond to comments as often. So that's, again, why I always tend to do these streams. It means I get to speak to you personally and answer your questions here if I missed it in the comments. Uh, so yeah, it was great chatting to you. Thank you very much for the donations because like I said, this is the last day of donations or at least the last day of donations on streaming. You can always donate through Streamlabs any other time you want, not just on the live streams. 
but basically where all the revenue I've uh, managed to attain throughout the month will get sent to my uh, payment basically for next month by Google which means I get to pay my bills and everything like that. So you guys and your donations, you really, really do help, and I really do appreciate that. Your generosity, it knows no bounds, and I never stop appreciating it. So really, thank you very, very much for that. Uh, this is Captain Eric, who's about to sign out now, and he's got a sore throat like crazy, and he still hasn't eaten yet as well, so he's got a lot of that to do. Uh, is, yeah, it's been a great day hanging out with you, Jess. It's been a great day. Neoma, Do the Dark Lord, Feather Guardian, Adam Grunther, as always, it's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks very much as well to the Time Shadow who gave me the idea to put commission videos on Patreon, which I'll look into and we'll see what we do with that. But yeah, I'm I'm such I'm so lucky to have such amazing viewers like you. I always look forward to chatting with you guys and making content for you guys and doing these live streams with you guys. Seriously, I am the luckiest YouTuber in the world to have such an amazing viewership and viewers like you. So thank you very very much and. This is Captain Eric signing out, and I'll catch all of you very, very soon. Take care.